Welcome back to Kind of Funny Star Wars in Review. That's right, we are ranking and reviewing every movie in the Star Wars movie universe. I'm Tim Geddes. This is Andy Cortez. Should That's we? Kevin Coelho. Oh, there we got Nick Scarpino. Hello. Should we all take turns? Ready? Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do okay. it. Tim's was, was nasty. Was <laughs> Tim's was the worst. Yeah. Tim's got gross. <laughs> that was good, guys. Man. So, wow. Can we take turns doing So be it. So be it. So be it. Oh, oh Andy I'm not good. going after Andy. This is oh. Star Wars in Review <laughs> each after. and every Tuesday right here on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. We review movies, have a good time. Uh, if you like that, you can watch it later on youtube.com slash kind of funny or on roosterteeth.com or you can listen to it as a podcast. Just search for kind of funny reviews on your favorite podcast service. Thank you very much for all of the thumbs up, five star ratings and all the good stuff that you could possibly do to make us look better to other human beings um just like patreon producers al tribesman Danny Boy. and david mintel the mind for the <sighs> just like they did uh you can get the show ad free by going to patreon.com slash kind of funny thank you all for all doing that as well today we are talking about star wars episode six return of the jedi mm. hmm. my favorite of the star wars movies really i would Still? say no. Or do you think historically favorite? Historically. My Interesting. Favorite. Okay. Yes. Not still anymore. <laughs> Not still. Uh, spoilers brain. for me. Um, but this film was released in theaters on May 25th, 1983. Six years to the day after the release of the first film. That's a, that's a hulking amount of work for George Lucas and his team. Uh, the film grossed between 475 million and 572 million worldwide. Couldn't. Between? Get a number. Huh. Couldn't figure out why this is what everyone reports. Well, they didn't have the internet back then, so no mm -hmm. one knows. But every other movie seems to have it have it down. I don't know why. Like, every site Mojo? that I was looking at, there's like it's some uh, between this and this. Interesting. Weird. Interesting. Yeah, and uh, um, the box office is the same way. It's like my grandmother. She doesn't quite know she was born on one year or the other. Mm -hmm. so, well, unless people tell you, it's hard to know. So she's either always like 72 or 73 or like 81 or 82. You know, it's always weird. That is extremely <laughs> fucking yeah. weird. Yeah. Uh, directed by Richard Marquand. Sure. Yeah. Marquand, Th I guess. I don't Marquand, know. I don't know. Although Lucas's first choice was Steven Spielberg, their separate feuds with the director's guild led to his being banned from directing the film. Yeah, because Spielberg was still in the guild, right? And mm -hmm. so he couldn't hire a guild director, mm -hmm. yeah. which is unfortunate. Also, Steven Spielberg is like, oh, uh, uh, I, this is your shit, dude. I got I indie. We're good. Your shit. We're Sounds good. like he wanted to, though. He would have been amazing. That would, it would have been, been amazing. Really interesting. And what's interesting is we sort of saw a glint of that with The Force Awakens because J.J. Abrams was such a devout follower of Steven Spielberg um, that we sort of got what his take would have been on it. But it would have been cool. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Lucas then approached David Lynch, who, who had been nominated for the Academy Award for Best Director for The Elephant Man in 1980. Uh, but Lynch declined, saying that he had next next door to zero interest. Wow. <laughs> Damn. Damn, David. What a dick. <laughs> uh, then another David, David Cronenberg, was also offered the chance oh, to direct. But he shit. declined been the offer to make Videodrome and The Dead Zone. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts that. on those? That's a crazy. I mean, movie, they're right? they're cult classics for sure. Yeah. But yeah. no, no thoughts on those. But turning down something like this for something like those. Well, you. Hear, <laughs> but I mean, you hear this all the time, right? You hear people go like, "That is such a big franchise that I don't know if I want to put myself through the ringer on that one." And like Cronenberg and Fincher or Lynch, rather, are like, they're more like uh, artistic directors. We'll just put it that way. And I don't think that I, I, I can see them not wanting to gravitate toward a Hollywood blockbuster. I mean, like I know. This. I mean, JJ said the same thing before Force Awakens. Like JJ was like, "No, I don't want a part of this." And then he said he would never return and all that stuff. Yeah. I think that like. And then they took bags of money and just backed it up in a huge dump truck. And yeah. Passed. I. I mean, it's not only yeah, that. Right. I think it's a lot of the fame that goes along with it. It's. It's like when we hear athletes like. Oh, sometimes I wish I could just walk in a mall. It's like, okay, yeah, but the, on the bright side of stuff, your life is like incredible, like financially, and you're super stable. Sure. So, like, but just this imagine will this will help like, you out a lot in the future. Andy, I know you don't know a lot about sports, so let me just go ahead and school you. Go ahead, man. Remember that one guy that like caught the ball at that one game instead of letting the other guy catch the ball and the team lost? And the guy was like, what the fuck did oh, you do? Oh, Steve Bartman exactly. caught it in the Cubs game. It was the curse of the Billy Goat. See, yeah. like, that's exactly what I was going to say. That was a quiz, and you passed. This is Thank like you. what Star Wars. <laughs> Has nice. become like you don't want to be the guy that like fucks, fucks it up because it, it up. fucks your life up. Yeah. And we're about to get into the prequels, and like 
Spoilers, it didn't turn out so well for Jar Jar and for An- young Anakin, right? You're watching 30 for 30 on that? No. It's real good, yeah. Uh, the catch so, or the so, Jar Jar? Okay, so let me just preference real quick. I'll just go through it like super Kevin. quickly. The catch. On the catch thing, yeah. So it was a Cubs game. The Cubs haven't won a World Series since like 1912 or whatever bullshit. Apparently, uh, the Babe Ruth is like cursing. I don't know. I don't remember. So Steve Bartman, like uh, Moises Alou was going to catch a pop fly in the outfield to like kind of end the game or get closer. Steve Bartman reached over. Caught the ball instead, and it like got in the way, and everybody was like, "Fuck you, Bartman!" Like, and he's a Cubs fan too. They're like, "Fuck you, dude!" Like, we would have won that year had it not been for you. Wait. And he went into hiding. A guy in the crowd. Okay, so a guy had right. stole a ball. Like, I've seen the video, like and that. there's like, a yeah. shot of him like sitting there with the glasses, and like the, he's wearing like headphones, and like people are giving him shit in the crowd. He had to be helped out by security and all this stuff, and he went to hiding for the longest time. And they made like a documentary on him because like they wanted Watch to, Jedi. they wanted to bring him back. It's yeah, he's kind of went to solitude, and uh, I th- the they when they won the ring, they were like, look, we or when they were in the playoffs, they were like, we have an open invite to you to come watch. And like and he we caught no, it again. Like, no, <laughs> he <laughs> fucked it up again. <laughs> no, he like I think he declined. He just didn't want to be a part oh, of so it. Sad. I was like, oh, no. it's so sad. I'd like to yeah. movie about that. Rat race. Yeah. The referee. Same situation. No, I don't remember that. Movie. I'd like yeah. to personally Omar. apologize to everyone listening to this Trading. for bringing sports into Trading. this arena. Uh, <laughs> like, it means yeah, to. I thought sorry. it'd be a funny joke. It went, went, went on way too long. <laughs> Mark Rand was hired by writer producer George Lucas to direct Return of the Jedi. In his commentary track in the DVD, Lucas explained that he had done some great suspense films and was really good with actors. I had the needle was the film I'd seen that he had done that impressed me the most. It was really nicely done and had a lot of energy and suspense. Then he went on to direct the 1985 courtroom thriller Jagged Edge. Starring Jeff Bridges and Glenn Close. My favorite rapper. It's so weird because, like, what else did he do beyond that? Yeah, I don't know. I'm always, I'm always so fascinated by those guys. I mean, he directed one of the biggest movies of like the '80s, and then nothing. Jagged Edge. So weird. Jagged Jagged Edge Edge. Uh, killed him. Then it got a box office of somewhere between 475 and 572 million. Interesting. Uh, I think I said this backwards. Budget of. Somewhere between 32.5 and 42.7 million. They just weren't really good at keeping the books together. Man. I don't know. But again, <laughs> it either cost nothing totally or something. funded by Lucas. <laughs> so it was a similar situation to, to Empire here. Uh, so maybe he was just like lying to us. I don't, I don't fucking know, guys. I don't know. I don't have the answers. A uh, runtime of two hours and 12 minutes. I'm happy that you tried, though, Tim. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I did the best that I could, Googling approximately for three minutes. Okay? Sure. Uh, before we get to the plot, what did we think about Return of the Jedi? It's so good. I enjoy it so much. It has so many good moments and lines and woo. Yeah, I th- I was talking to to Kevin earlier. The you know, it got to the spot with I'm a Jedi like my father before me, and chills just overtook my body. I'm like, God, this was so close to being the best Star Wars ever. Like, I'm totally with you. It's it was so close, and like even that moment, almost like. I don't, I don't think it's a bad movie by any stretch of the imagination. I thought it was fucking awesome. It's that fucking, was fucking awesome. awesome. But like, god damn, it could have been the best one ever, you know? I think it gets extra credit points for the throne room sequences. That's I true. love that. Yeah. I love everything between him and the Emperor and Vader. Great dialogue. Mm-hmm. Great dialogue. Mm-hmm. Actually well acted. And just the energy behind the movements of the, the duels is so cool to see, especially after having just watched him. That, that, the, the, the switch from Empire mm. to now of Luke being the one that can overpower his father because of like tapping into that but then um, like letting him get up to that line and then go realizing oh shit like I'm becoming bad, him yeah. with that with cutting off the hand and seeing mm-hmm. both the, like that I love that um, and then the Emperor like having that one moment where he's like so fuck it we gotta kill you then yeah. he's like you fail he's like so be it you know like, <laughs> I'm like, bro, you tell me you had the fucking lightning. Yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. I, th- I thought uh, even the moments leading up to the sort of over aggression, the, the fucking beat down, mm-hmm. that's so awesome. But I and think the music even, there is I so think good. Uh, even the fight scenes before that are just so much better to watch and so much easier to watch than prior ones because the other ones have been pretty awkward looking. And pretty like unathletic. These like well, yeah, this actually was, looked yeah. cool. Mark and, Hamill's like, actually like, moving yeah, in this, and it, yeah. Like, yeah. Well, this was so cool too because the way it shot is there's so much silhouette. There's so much just like, just just the like the lightsabers, right? The good and the bad it doesn't matter who's swinging them. It's so fucking rad. Yeah, I I mean I freaking loved it so much. But I just think that this movie, especially now watching them so close to the others, I feel like it. Easily has the best moments in the entire trilogy, and it easily has the worst moments in the entire trilogy. That to me is the thing that brings it down, because there is a lot of things where, you know, I the Ewoks don't bother me so much. It's more just kind of the overall tone of the movie where it, it it's kind of it, it feels lesser than like 
so much the movie feels like the second act of a movie, and it feels like this movie doesn't have a second act. It's weird. Mm. Like it just kind of goes from they're at Jabba's palace to then they're on Endor. Yeah, right. Even and they're on there like, for a yeah. long time, and they're on yeah. there a long time. Mm-hmm. And it's like so those things kind of drag it down. But for all of that, it's like everything Luke does is freaking rad as hell. Everything. Yeah. Anytime the Emperor or Vader's on screen, so freaking awesome, Great. so freaking cool. Yeah. When Luke first comes back wearing all black and he's just like, "I'm a Jedi Knight," when he just chokes the dudes and th- puts them against the wall, it's like. This is the coolest freaking yeah, thing yeah. possible. And really I love badass. that they just committed. They're like, all right, this is the end. Let's just give people what they want. Like, let's make something really yeah. cool and commit to that. But I just feel like for as cool as they made Luke look, they made a lot of weird decisions. Why was Han blind and stuttering around for a long time until conveniently he wasn't? Because you know hibernation, I mean? hibernation sickness, bro. Sickness. I, cool. Yeah, right. Let me I say get this. The, like, that's when what they said. you sleep like 12 hours, you wake, most people wake up they can't see. Yeah. yeah. Ah, I've, ah, I've somebody that. feed me soup. That's what I do. Yeah. You ever wake up and you have like too much gunk in your eye? No, I met no, a couple times. Yeah, a couple times. I'm not gonna say I haven't. Um, yeah, I don't. I, I'm not the type that like hates the Ewoks either. I but love the Ewoks. I, I love the Ewoks so much. But I just thought a lot of the sequences involving them were just far too goofy for that than what I wanted. Goofy like, is I, a good word. It's just this goofy is fun. Return of the yeah. Jedi is goofy. I would yeah. say it's not goofy. I would say it's playful. It has a much more playful tone than Empire, which is very, very, very dark. Um, I mean, I'm obviously bringing a lot of nostalgia in this because when I watched this movie, it was probably the earliest, let's put it this way, earliest I could have watched the movie was when I was three years old. So it's possible that I saw this when I was three years old. And of course, a giant life-size teddy bear running around with like all my favorite characters from murdering Star Wars. Stormtroopers. Great. Until they get hyper aggressive and start murdering. I'll put it this way. Dropping rocks. There's a scene in this movie like, that... Ah! There's, like, no. there's a scene in this movie that just did not need to be in there and it made me cry when I was a kid every single fucking time. And it's when the explosion goes off and two Ewoks hit the ground and one wakes up and the other one doesn't. It had to be there. And I'm like, dude! I, I was about to say, like, what a, like, what a crazy and intense puller. scene where it's like they both go down and then one of them is just shaking the other one like... And no. then it's just like, damn. Uh, Going off that, here's my problem with Jedi that I, that, I, that I have is that that scene is what I feel like this entire movie should have been. I felt something for that damn Ewok mm-hmm. that you don't even know his name. You don't know anything about it. It doesn't matter. These, you believe in these creatures. One just died. You care. They had a relationship. Yoda dies. And I could not care less. Why did he die? He's old, man. He's 900 old. years old. You didn't, I, I thought that, that was another that seems, scene where it was so like, oh, conven- man. Not at all. No oh. emotion for me. Where it's like, Yoda's just here. Why? Purely as a plot he device to confirm on... that Darth Vader's Luke's father. But That's also to tell it. him that he's not, a, he's not a Jedi yet. That was the thing, too. Is he's like, yeah. well, you're, you're not really a Jedi. You gotta, you gotta go face Vader. That's your final challenge to become a Jedi. But I think it's interesting because we don't really get any setup that Luke has gone back there since Empire. And I don't think when, he has. He hasn't. But when he left... Yoda was like, you haven't finished your training. And then he comes back and he's like, ah, well, you've done everything you can except for face your father. But I mean, like, like well, what's that, the alternative? Being like, yo, you didn't finish your training. You're fucked. You know what I mean? I mean so, yeah, yeah, you gotta the die. The alternative yeah. is, like, set up that, like, he's been coming back in the year that's passed yeah. that we haven't seen. They're like, you did finish your training. He comes out I, and says, I'm a Jedi Knight. It's like, are you, though? Yoda's saying Yeah, that's always, like gave himself that title. That's always an interesting so, uh, an interesting question because in order to complete the training, obviously, it's not necessarily canon for the movie, but, like, him making a new lightsaber, how did he know how to do that if he didn't go back to Yoda? Well, and where did he? Well, I mean, and where did he get that? Yeah. <laughs> he the X-wing, he's, like, on the X-Wing trying to do it, like, with a burger. <laughs> oh, no, put it on. I bought pilot. this fucking rock. <laughs> I bought this <laughs> a crystal. <laughs> yeah. He could have had Obi-Wan. dude gave me it. I don't know. He could have had Obi Wan still like coming in, Force Ghost, being like, "Hey, That's possible. pick up the thing." I mean, the, impo- the important thing to note is that he is a poser at the be- pretty much all the way in this movie until he the decides Marianne. that he's not going to kill his dad, mm. and that is when he becomes a Jedi. When he when he chooses that I'm not going to go to the dark side, and and willfully says like, even if it you know leads to my ruination or death, I'm 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 a Jedi through and through. That's the moment he becomes a Jedi, which is which is crazy to think because you're really only seeing him. And granted, I know he's done Jedi stuff all the whole time, but you're really only seeing Luke Skywalker Jedi Master the last ten minutes of the movie. I mean, but that's the thing is like that's just by by words. It's default, right? I mean, yeah. but it's like, well, how is he not? A Je- he says he's a Jedi in the beginning and of this he, movie, he, and he does things. He is a Jedi, dude. but he he's also does there. things at the beginning of the movie that again we see we see him more in the prequels. Spoilers, but. Him walking in and force choking people ain't cool. No, that's a dark not. side shit. Yeah, but neither is him <laughs> going at Vader. That's why, and this, that's why I think that's why he goes. He realizes all that stuff and goes, "Oh, this was my final test." Like, and I've passed because I didn't give into that. I didn't give into the, the quick and easy route, the fear and the aggression. 
I'm gonna just relax here, and I think everything's gonna be okay. Oh God, my nuts! You know, the like, ul- ah, the ultimate Jedi test would have been to be able to float a rock towards the door to kill the rat. Rancor, Rancor, Rancor. Rancor. Yeah. instead of but he it. instead of throwing a rock. <laughs> weird yeah. choice. So weird. Again, yeah. he does a lot of stuff in the beginning where you're like, are you really a Jedi? Like if I was watching, that, I'd be like, so bad. Well, he was I would lean over to Andy and be like, I don't think this guy's a Jedi, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's what makes the throne shit. room God. like the sequence so cool and. Worth it of like the struggle between the two, and yeah. finally that payoff. That's where you great. It's like it's so yes, good. I am I'm going this the peaceful route, and I'm going to try my best to to not be seduced by the dark side. So I mean, cool. I I think it is goes without saying that the throne room scene is just it's perfect. It's iconic I think it's, at it's, this point. It's more than iconic. I think it is ten out of ten. Like yeah. that is that is Star Wars, and why Star Wars is amazing. I just think I just that love that. that fucking part where Luke just looks at me and goes, "You failed," and then he just throws his lightsaber. Yeah. And I'd be like, like again, if I was watching, yeah, I'd be like, what's he throwing the lightsaber for? Yeah. <laughs> like, come on, man. You, we know that he can take the electricity yeah. the next one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be careful, man. You got to be careful. Um, but I just think that it. there's nothing in this movie that's bad. I just think that that stuff's so good that, by comparison, mm-hmm. it makes you question everything that much more. It's tough. And it's, you know, the other thing that's, that's always interesting to go back and watch, especially with these older films, is the difference between the actual actors from the first one to the next one. And this one, for whatever reason, it doesn't stick out at all for me with Empire. Like, Empire, I love the way everyone has aged into that. But with this one, everyone feels, a, like, Han feels a little old, and they all have that that haircut that's like Ghostbusters 1 to Ghostbusters 2, where you're like, why is his hair so like that? Luke's I, hair was so much cooler than Luke, you hope. Well, I don't mm-hmm. mind Luke's hair in this. It's a little clean cut, but like it's Han's hair that I'm like, you you got a 1984 haircut, looking. bro. Like, no, like, before it was like 70s and long and like roguish, and this one he's like, I just wanted super cuts. Okay, Luke, I just had to get it out of my face. Luke had the cooler, like longer, like I don't give a fuck hair, and this one he looks like a Stranger Things kid. He That's looks cool. like he You're looks like so the one. Cool. He looks like the one kid that was always stuck in the upside down. Well, he's the, supposed to be more clean cut, right? He's supposed to have his shit together, and he's like, I got my shit together. I got my, I got this cut. I got this fade. I got this dope ass <laughs> pimp suit, like this priest, like yeah. Morpheus suit. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Good suit. All right. Do you want to sing the background uh, noise for me? Oh, I got you. Sing, okay. Sing it for me. Greg's not here, so Nick will say the plot. Will there be a lot of sexual jokes? I hope not. Greg sucks. That was supposed to be. Craig sucks. That was good. Okay, that was good. That was good. Yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, it's Star Wars, and we get the final scroll of the original trilogy. Luke's uh, going back to Tatooine to save Han from the vile gangster Jabba the Hutt. Little does he know the Empire is building another Death Star. This one is even more powerful than the one in A New Hope, but way less powerful than the one of Force Wagon. So we got that going for us, which is nice. <laughs> Either way, when complete, uh, when complete, this ultimate weapon will spell certain doom for everyone in the galaxy, including Kevin. Sorry, Kevin. You're gonna die. <laughs> but it's a galaxy far, far away. I'd be fine. Yeah, but it's a big blast. Dude. High above the forest moon of Endor, Vader takes his hand was so warm. <laughs> That's really <laughs> laptop like pretty up. Uh, takes a transport ship over to the new Death Star. It's a bit rough around the edges, but hey, we're moving in anyway. We're hoping to have this thing finished by Christmas. Uh, Moth Jarajod. Jarajod. Jar Jared greets. <laughs> I read that. So I was like, "This is not going. It's going in the brain." And just <laughs> greets Vader as he exits. Uh, Vader's not happy. He tells him to dispense the pleasantries. He's here to put them back on schedule. The Emperor is pissed, and when the Emperor is pissed, people get choked the fuck out. BTW, you can tell the Emperor all about this when he gets here, because he's coming, baby, and he's not as forgiving as I am. And everyone's like, "I'll double my effort." He's like, "Yeah, but yeah." Because this guy's got electric yeah, hands. That's a smart move, bro. And he's a good yeah. dancer. Uh, that was a first cool moment in the. In the movie so far it was like oh dude oh, Emperor's coming tone changed right away to be like yep we'll, we'll start putting people yeah. double time cause like the balls on Moff Jer Gerard right oh. where he's like dude I'm doing all I can he's like Jar are you Jared. are you <laughs> Jar Jared that's what it is <laughs> no I don't know I'm it is saying, it's Jar Jar uh, or whatever I don't know uh, then baby we're back JJ <laughs> we're, we're calling Moff JJ <laughs> Uh, we're back where it all started. Tatooine, the Laughlin, Nevada of the galaxy. C-3PO and R2 approach Jabba's palace to figure out what the H happened to Lando and Chewie, who never came back. They just never came back. Uh, they knock on Jabba's really big door, and a robot That's eyeball really comes out big. to greet them. It's really big. That always used to scare me. Anytime anything was it's obnoxiously intuitive. big, yeah. I'm like, fuck, man. Jurassic Park. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Exactly. <laughs> but so the, the thing that I appreciate so much about <laughs> Star Wars, the previous <laughs> ones, is the sense of scale of every time. Anytime you see something, there's something bigger coming, and it's just like mm. always impressive. It's always yeah. a big Seeing the door is great. Then the way that they shoot C-3PO and, and R2, like, knocking on it. Something about the way that those things cut together, I'm like, 
losing a sense of scale. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I just thought it was, it was scary. One of the only times in the trilogy that I'm like, the map painting, the like visuals we're seeing, the mm -hmm. wide doesn't, doesn't match, match the clothes. Up. Yeah, I can see that. Mm -hmm. I mean, the map painting in this, I mean, just a shout out to it, is unbelievably good. Mm -hmm. cool. You know, you, we, so we were talking cool. earlier with like where we see Jabba's Palace for the first time. That map painting is just so beautiful. It's stunning, man. It's gorgeous. Is um, this, there's, a, there's a moment where we're, we're seeing Jabba's Palace again, and then there's a frog that like eats something, and it's yeah, like. Of course. That and CG. Yeah. Or, or it wasn't CG. It was, you know, you, was that thing, practical? Guys, here's practical. the thing. I watched the original theatrical version again yeah. for Jedi. That scene's in it. Yeah, it's a little frog. And he yeah. burps. It's the whole thing. Oh, that was not added. I can't believe it because that yeah. feels like such a special yeah. edition I still, move. I still refuse to believe that that's it's in, in it. Hundred percent, it's in it. That's Didn't I make a joke about another thing farting? Like, yeah, there's a fucking frogs burping and shit. Like, hey man, frogs <laughs> got to burp. Uh, they knock on Jabba's really big door. The robot eye comes out to greet them. C three PO really doesn't want to do it, but R two couldn't care less. He's got a message for Jabba from Master Luke, and he's gonna deliver it. Um, they are greeted as the door is opened by Big Bib Fortuna, uh, who takes them. Over to Jabba to deliver the message. Just a dirty, design, just a man. dirty looking man. Yeah, because right? he's got those red eyes, Ugh. the like teeth. A it's, eyes. it's the like the wrapped around. Yeah. yeah, he's a Twi'lek, right? Uh, sure, Twi'lek, Twi'lek. Sure, the, is I, he? Let's buy, were buy were they going out the same way? I thought. I don't know. I thought he only had one. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I think maybe he, males only have one. We've only. Fuck, you're right, dude. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, they've also got a gift to deliver to him. He's like a gift, uh, but Bib doesn't like it, and he takes them to see uh, takes them to see Jabba, uh, who looks like a giant slimy worm. Uh, R two delivers a message from Luke, who seeks an audience with Jabba to bargain for Han Solo's life as a token of his goodwill. He presents Jabba with a gift. These two droids, uh, C three PO and R two. Jabba doesn't want to give up his favorite wall uh, wall decoration though, so no deal. And to be fair, Han does look pretty good hung up on a wall. He does. Right? That was like, a, another really cool good. moment of like, dude, Jabba is like fucked up. He's fucked Dumb. Jabba is incredible looking. <laughs> yeah. I was stunned. Yeah, he looks great. I don't like in, the blues. In the original one. Oh, wipe it down. That I'm watching. Oh, I could have oh, sworn oh. that he was touched up with CG. He's not, man. That's a big physical thing. Between him and Salacious Crumb, like, those two things are freaking... <laughs> you, you, you can, uh... You can sort of Nailed it. It, it takes away some of the immersion where there's a whenever he gets choked out later in the movie when Leia j runs and jumps on him mm -hmm. like when she where you she steps like, like where she steps his belly just completely <laughs> caves in just, just like there's nothing through. there. I, I yeah. feel like immediately after that though while he's being choked that looks visceral man yeah. that that is really graphic looking it kind of like. That intense violence kind of comes out of nowhere. Was this also the, uh, so, you know, we're obviously introduced to Jabba's little, like, dirty area. Uh, um, but we, uh, is this where, I think in the CG, they added a Doug walking in? A Sebulba yeah. yeah, Doug? Yeah, they did. They like, did. Like, I was like, oh, we, great. We had, to we had to induce, introduce uh, that I, race into this world. Yeah. I, and Could've I been think Sebulba. that might have been after, like, because they add Anakin in, and so this must have been touched up after the, the special, 99. Special edition, yeah, yeah, extra yeah. special edition. Yeah. Uh, Which but, was great, because we had to see all the Gungans go, we so free! Yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> so bad. Shout out, to the, so shout out to you the Carrie those. Fisher moment where she does uh, walk over Jabba. I think it was that same Building Empire documentary where she uh, accidentally, I think, stepped on one of the people controlling the oh, tail really? inside. So they had to like pat it down and stuff so he didn't get hurt. Oh, Damn. that's funny. Crazy. Uh, they, he, Jabba takes the droids, and R2 is sent to work on Jabba's pimp yacht, uh, which is like, hey, man, say all right. Meanwhile, C-3PO is kept in the lounge uh, with a restraining bolt uh, to be the interpreter, because the last one they did, uh, they got pissed off and disintegrated him, because Jabba does not like to keep people around. Mm -hmm. If he gets pissed off, he just fucks the light shit up. And then for no, no reason at all, they're like just torturing that trash can. You don't know what and, he did. And he's just yelling. Well, they're not torturing. They're branding him. No, I think they were torturing. It well, was going. Down, oh, you gotta make yeah. sure it gets in there. You know, yeah. gotta make sure it gets in there. I think there. they were trying to teach him a lesson, Nicholas. Uh, upstairs, the band starts to play, and the song, and it's not the and original the song. song. <laughs> and man, this one makes me want to just staple my ear shut. I hate this whole sequence so much. We were talking it's about it earlier. Good. The original sequence to me is so much better because the music makes sense for the era in which the music, the, the movie was kind of made. It feels like space sleaze, and then when you see, uh, I forget the the character's name, when you see the dance. Dancer, dancing, and then you you really get a sense of like how fucked up Jabba is because he just wants to kill her, like he just wants to kill something. But in this one, we get it. And I'm like, oh my worst God. change in the entire the trilogy. Very, very I can't bad. believe they did it. It's just so totally off. I wish it's they hadn't done that. But in the original, 
Ooh, it's her name. still not cool. Really? Like the the song. It's cool. They're saying oh, 100%. But it's the creature is the same. Like it's the same model, Just but instead CG. of it being CG, it's a puppet thing, and it looks horrible. It looks like a stuffed animal. And a lot of these, the band creatures in the theatrical release, yeah. I'm like, this looks, looks like, like such a Chuck step e. down <laughs> compared to what we've seen so far. That it's like, what are you doing? Because Java shit's supposed to be cool, and instead, especially we got the purple fucking dinosaur or the, the elephant, the blue guy. I'm so wrong right now. The blue elephant, the Max Rebo. So it's yeah. like. When you have the, that goofy looking of an alien next to these things, you need some more like intimidating things. And this fucking long snouted you know, you know singer the, girl. The problem with the scene for me and, and and putting new CG in this, aside from the fact that we all know that it's not supposed to be there or wasn't originally there, I shouldn't say not supposed to be there, but wasn't originally there, is that it, it, it comes off to me like Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Where it's you've got normal like things mm-hmm. that are practically done, and then this zany this and stress cartoon that's in there because totally. they just didn't have the seat, the technology. What I need them to do is go back, open up the project, relink all the shit, and hit re-render with like a better renderer. Mm-hmm. And I know that's not how it works, but like if you're gonna do that, but she just the fact that she like pops in like 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 fucking uh, Roger Nothing Rabbit, else moves like, like that. Yeah, it's yeah. so bad. It's so fucking bad. I posted the photo on Instagram the other day of like her like up close with the little uh, puckering up to the camera. And my uh, my buddy Travis, aka Star Wars Kid, on Twitter and Instagram replies, "Size Snoodles, it's my girl Snoodles." He says, "That's my girl Snoodles." And I, and I was like, "Who? What?" And so he was like, "Before her time at Jabba's palace, she was romantically entangled with Zero the Hut, uncle of Jabba. She also uh, double crossed and killed him." There you I was go. like, "Wow, look at that facts right there." That's, that's, that's the, the fact singer. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do we have any Noodle, backstory baby. on Ula, the girl that gets dropped into the Rancor pit? No, oh, that's was, unfortunate. Did did she have a longer scene in in the original where she's like dancing? I think she dances, more really and so, like he yeah. drags her close and kind yeah. of yeah, yeah, yeah. He kind yeah. of drags okay. her. I mean, she doesn't want to go. Very, so I felt like that was very brief. way way shortened. Oh yeah, because we have. It's a different I don't know song. Way shortened. It's real quick. <laughs> okay. the, the song only plays for like. Twelve seconds or something, and like yeah. he gets, she gets pulled and just dropped. Well, either way, so Ula, he drops Ula into the rancor pit, and uh, then he takes a little break for a snack, just a little snack. But unfortunately, that snack is interrupted by Bosch, who walks in Fuck yeah, with Chewy in chains. And let me tell you, kids, you know the reveal here, but I didn't. Yeah, I didn't, yeah. and I was like, what? The, that's the coolest bounty hunter costume I've ever seen in my entire life. I didn't think they could make a cooler costume than Boba Fett. And then but they Bosch is cool, man. Dude, the way she talks to is so cool. Yeah, do you know why it's cool? Why? Do you know who the voice is? Who's the voice? The voice is Pat Welsh, the same radio actress who was the voice of E.T. Oh, that's fun. Oh, Oh, wow. Uh, Jabba offers 25K for Chewie, but Bosch wants 50. When Jabba asks why he should pay 50, uh, Bosch answers and SC3PO translates, because I'm holding a thermal detonator. Wow. Just pulls that out. And then this is what Boba Fett, by the way, is here. And Boba Fett pulls out his gun immediately. But but the whole situation is diffused. And this is another great character trait of Jabba. So instead of freaking out, he just starts laughing. Yeah. And he's like, you're my kind of scum. Like, you're my kind of bounty hunter. And I love that. And he's like, all right, I'll give you 35,000. How do you feel about that? like, I'll take it. Uh, then they play the original dope music, uh, and everyone starts to party again. Bring out that space coat, because you are you just got a nod from Boba Fett, because Boba Fett's like, what's up? And Boss is like, what's up? And they're like, let's wear respect. some fucking... Yeah. Yeah. Let's wear some of that. Game, game space game coat. Respect game, 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 yeah. game respect game. Game man. respect. <laughs> Later that night, Boss sneaks down to the giant slumber party happening downstairs. Uh, do people ever leave this room? I don't know. And frees Han Solo from his carbonite prison. Uh, Han wakes up with hyper uh, hibernation sickness. Hyper... Man. You got it. Hibernation. Yeah, hibernation. 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 All right. Uh, which makes him blind. When he asks who's there, Bosch tells him someone who loves him. And takes off the mask to reveal Bosch is Leia. Bosch Hell. is Leia. Yes. Whoa. So good. Uh, so freaking cool. So freaking cool. Uh, Jabba's laugh then, of course, echoes through the hall. Surprise! We're all awake. And one of the side effects from that Tatooine booger sugar. Han tries to reason with Jabba, but Jabba won't, <laughs> Jabba won't hear of it. I mean, they're up all night, right? You should know they're fucking partying. Like, they're not going to bed. This party's going to last like 10, 10 months. Uh, instead, he wants to perv out on Leia. They throw Han in the dungeon where he's reunited with Chewie, who tells him that Luke is a Jedi Knight now uh, and has a plan. And he's like, I've lived for two months and people have delusions of grandeur. I love that. Uh, and then Chewie hugs him, which is like the most endearing thing ever. He's like, I know. It's great. I know. It's, it's, okay. it's going to be okay. Uh, the next morning, a cloaked figure enters the palace and immediately starts fo- force choking people. And you're like, wow, that's just really mean. Uh, he enters Jabba's office and we get our first glance at Slave Leia. And this is the point at which every boy in the 80s became a man. Uh, Luke uses the Jedi mind trick uh, to trick Jip, uh, Bib Fortuna, introducing him to Jabba. Jabba gets pissed that Bib is a weak-minded fool and is like, that, that, that JMT ain't going to work on me. First time we see Jedi mind trick and it's yeah. like, oh, that's the coolest way you could have called that. 
Yeah. Wow. They call, he calls it the Jedi mind fucking trick. Fucking awesome. But also Jabba's like, nah, dude. Fucking idiot. Like, do I have to do everything myself? I should have uh, put a fucking toy Darien out there, you know. <laughs> Andy, uh, <laughs> just a quick update for you. I looked up Bib Fortuna is a Twilight. Oh, cool. There you go, man. Really? Yeah. Oh, all right. Uh, I, I'm i taking Captain Solo and his friends. You can either uh, profit from this or be destroyed, is what Luke tells him. And C-3PO tries to tell him he's standing on a trap door, but before Luke uh, can act, he's dropped into the Rancor pit. And boy, is this thing hungry. It eats that little pig monster that was dropped in first, uh, which makes Luke stop and think, maybe I should have gone back to school like Ben said. You know, like maybe yeah. if I went back to college. I always none felt of this so sad happen. for that little guy. Like, yeah. save him, for he Christ's sake. Die. No one yeah. tried. They're all just laughing. I always the love other how pig monsters are just laughing there, too. I always love how the pig monsters remind me of, like, the, uh, the, Zelda, bad the guys. Zelda bad guys. Yeah. 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 They, they always remind me of Duke Nukem. Uh, that too. Yeah. Uh, Luke tries to fight it off with a stick, but uh, by sticking a bone in its mouth, but that didn't work. Uh, then he tries to hide under a rock, and that doesn't work either. Uh, then he makes for the door, and that doesn't work either because it's blocked by an outside gate, and everyone just laughs at him when it opens up. Uh, noticing the rancor is under the massive steel door that held it back before, uh, Luke takes a, a rock up and uses the force to push it over to a button. No, I'm just kidding. He just <laughs> yeah. throws that fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't have time for the force. Edition. Okay, throws it, uh, bringing the door down really, really fast. <laughs> To which someone should be like, we should have fixed that door. That safety mechanism has been broken for a very, I very long like time. I feel like that's what you want if the Rancor is it's not behaving. At you. That's yeah, you know true. what I mean? That's probably a good call. Yeah. Uh, of course, the door comes down and tears right through the Rancor's back. And then we get just a real tender moment <laughs> with the Rancor <laughs> Wrangler. Where he just starts <laughs> I love crying. that scene so <laughs> much. Guy's like, I'm not surprised crying. that you love it, Kevin. So There's sad. something about it. That <laughs> it's just one of those things, man. Like He just he just lost his job and his best friend. And his lover. <laughs> 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 Man, I mean, it's hard out there for me. Uh, time to take this party out to Jabba's pimp yacht. Everyone is to be terminated at the Dune Sea while well, they'll be thrown into the Sarlacc pit while uh, well, they'll be slowly digested for a thousand years. Uh, Luke tells Han to stick close to Chewie and Lando, and he's going to take care of everything. And Han's like, no, you're not. Dude, what do you got? What, what's going on here? Uh, up at the party, Jabba pervs out some more on Slave Leia, and C-3PO is reunited with R2, who seems confident that they're going to win. R2, uh, though, killing it as a little bar cart. I know, I yeah. love it. If we ever have tons of money, we should yes. get a little controllable bar cart that comes around and delivers us it. like mojitos. Uh, <laughs> when they pull up to the Starlight Pit, we see uh, some more of that CG, <laughs> some more of the added CG, which was uh, which turns the horrifying pit uh, that gave me nightmares as a child into uh, Audrey 2 from Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah, which yeah. Uh, so unnecessary. Yeah. It so was fucking unnecessary. More than enough. It, how it was. It was just a dark pit with tentacles. Fucking terrifying. Yeah, like that terrifying. was way more terrifying because like you don't even. Like you can't like uh, you don't know what's was, in there. Yeah, like when I was a kid, I didn't even register it as like a creature. It just looks like this weird fucking thing that you would just exist in. Yeah. Was the, that you wouldn't know what it is. Yeah. Now it's just a fucking Venus flytrap. Did yeah. the old version have the uh, like the sort of teeth? No. Yeah. Around? It had the yeah. teeth around. It had it. teeth yeah. around. Just in the sand. It just didn't have the tongue. But yeah, it didn't have like the weird flowery looking shit. Yeah. 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 It looked yeah. like one of those worms. What do they call those things? The worms that has like the, the rows of teeth. Is that oh. a native thing? That might be a native the thing. The little tiny. The little tiny. Maybe it's a very tardigrade. No, no, those things look like water cute bears. small bears. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jabba give, Luke gives Jabba one more chance to free them or die, and Jabba thing. tells him to just get fucked. And then Luke goes cool, and then walks off a little dive, like they push him out on a little Dude, diving board. But again, board. that like him telling him one more time as he's about to get pushed off into this death hole, so like a cool. hey, submit or die, yeah. and it's just being like. What the? F Everyone's like laughing Come at him, on, and it's like, Joker. oh, he's such, he's so cool. And this, like, this scene just always brings me back to the the Family Guy spoof where <laughs> their glances dun. just last dun. way too long, and it's like, dun, dun, dun. and it goes on for like mm. at least a minute. Guy style. Yeah. Of just random characters like <laughs> nodding at each other. It's so fucking. Stupid. I love it. Uh, Luke, of course, <laughs> looks up at them. Then he gives them a little salute as he jumps off. And as he jumps off, he flips around, grabs onto the diving board, flips back up as R two D two shoots his brand new lightsaber out to him, oh. and he lights that thing up. And let me tell you guys, this is another just great moment for me as a child because I was like. Green, dude. I mean, that's the it's thing. Green. It's like you're you're so 12 years old. Whatever's cool. happening. So a couple cool. scenes ago, you just right. Then this happens. You're you like, can't. I didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah, I had more in me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, oh, got it. I did not know it was possible. Green lightsabers, baby. So dope. Woo. Uh, he thing. lights it up, man, and then that, a streak of green flashes through the air, and momentarily, I mean, and he just starts making short work of all the soldiers that are on, soldiers that are on a little skiff with him and Han and Chewie. Uh, all hell breaks loose, and Boba Fett's like, "Time for some action from the back section," mm -hmm. and he lights up 
I didn't even know he had a rocket pack on. Did you know he had a rocket pack on? If I was at this party, at I'd be like, point, did, you, did, you, did he have a rocket pack on when he came in? <laughs> what is the rocket pack, right? Uh, he uses his rocket pack to, to boost over the little skiff. Uh, uh, and then, the, oh, well, that's why I got lost. Uh, then Hound accidentally bumps into him, which ignites the rocket pack. Actually, no, someone like someone shoots something around him first. Oh, he uses his little thing and shoots it around Han. That's what he does. And then no, he Han, shoots it around Luke. Yeah, Luke. Luke yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And then Luke's like, oh, shit, I can't get out. And then Han's like, what? Boba Fett, Boba Fett, and slams Boba into him. Fett. And then Boba Fett re- ignites and slams into against the pimp yacht and then falls into the Sarlacc pit. And that's it. And it's it. the saddest thing. And he's Boba just Fett gone. Dies and it's Because awesome. Han accidentally bumps Bumped into yeah. him. It's yeah. great. He hit him it's with, didn't he hit him with like a, a, he had like a gun that he was holding and he turned around and it hit the back of the it, it what a is loser! Arguably the most disappointing thing, but also awesome. Not, but not, but not to be outdone by that, like getting bumped into the scene immediately before that, just horribly missing people with his gun. Like he's aiming right at people where the TV is, right, and it's just like not going anywhere. Yeah, near way them. less impressive. <laughs> yeah, not only that, but like not a tactical advantage being on this tiny little skip yeah. when you had the high ground. Yeah. You could just picked them off one by yeah. one. Boba Fett deserves to die. Future spoilers. It's fair. It's, I'm sorry. I apologize. They, um, uh, don't don't they also set up a? T- maybe he gets shot by a turret. I don't know, they're setting up a turret. It just. He's, he's uh, terrible. Stay uh, on the ship and shoot from there. <laughs> yeah. I know, dude. Use a thermal detonator. <laughs> Upstairs in the pimp lounge, Leia uses her slave chains to strangle the shit out of Jabba, and he, he just goes out the, terribly, which is what he deserves. The tongue shooting out of his mouth uh, as he's slowly choking to death. Perfect. And Leia just, you don't know this has been the special, special edition. She just whispers in his ear. She's like, shh, go to sleep. Shh, go to sleep. I'm just favorite, the cook. My favorite thing. <laughs> just the cook. <laughs> Downstairs, uh, Han saves Londo from the Sarlacc pit by blindly blasting one of the pit's tentacles. Love this. Uh, upstairs, R2, D2 shocks Salacious Crumb with, uh, while Luke murks pretty much everyone upstairs with the lightsaber. Not well, but he does. It, it's good enough. He's kind of swinging that thing like this is the first time swinging a baseball bat, and then someone shoots him in the hand, and he's like, oh, no, and then he kills the guy. So Han here, he's blind. He's blindly shooting the thing. He's halfway blind. Then he becomes not blind. No, he can only he's- see light. Like he's, he's like, slowly regaining He's halfway his blind. Yeah, yeah, when he saves Lando, he's like... That's why Lando's like a little higher, a little he's higher. Like, you yeah, can't yeah, see yeah. and He's like, oh, I can... I, I can... I'm I know, I'm there. all good now. You know? It just seems weird to me in a movie about the Force that you'd allow a character to not see and then like be able to do that. It's like, I feel like that's implying Han has some type of Force powers. No. no. He was no. coming, no, he was coming no, out he, of it. Yeah, he's when, coming out of it uh, and Lando so told him to aim on the right over been blind or he should have been blind. On the right over, they set up like he he's starting to see stuff. Yeah, he said, I think my my vision started to come back before I used to see a large dark spot now I'm seeing a large light spot. Yeah. And it was kind of a joke of like, you know, he realizes that they're out in the middle of the day but his his eyesight is coming back. Because Leia even says, she's like, you have hypernation sickness. You're blind but it'll come back. So it just starts coming back. Yeah. Man, freeze yourself in carbonite. You come back, and if you're not blind, I, you're fucking so cool. It just seems like such, cool. like, why did oh, this happen? Because so cool. they said it happened. When did it stop? When they said it stopped. You're so picky, dude. No, I mean, look at the other movies. They didn't do this in New Hope. They didn't do it in Empire. They did it here. He why? There was no carbonite. Those other movies. Uh, Fuck, you're right. <laughs> you're really, really well, there right. there actually sure. was in the last one, right? Right, but, like, you know. Yeah, yeah. no, I got uh, you. Back right. up on the deck, of course, uh, Luke tells Leia to fire up one of the cannons, and then she, they pointed at the... The floor of the of the yacht itself, and then Luke grabs her, grabs on one of the rope, kicks the the trigger to the cannon, and swings over as it blasts a hole through the the pimp yacht, uh, and then that whole thing explodes as their little skiff makes their way to safety, which is really really cool. And I love they actually pick, they stop to pick up R two and uh, and C three PO as well. Real, before we move on, just because yeah. I want to make sure that my point's clear, I'm not just like nitpicking this because it's just like oh like well, why 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 did they decide to make him blind? Like what did that add to the story? All it added was him bumping into Boba Fett. If he wasn't blind, he could also have had that with fun that. scene with Lando, where Lando was like, "Oh, you can't see what? Don't shoot!" And you know, that was. Fun. I mean, I agree. It's weird I, to say I would have liked to have seen him add have into something. We've 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 built up now over a couple movies that Boba Fett's been chasing him, yeah. and Boba Fett has put him in this situation. It would have been nice to have them actually have to fight each other on the skiff and have some moment where Han could have overcome it. Yeah. But, also, Han is sort of the anti-hero. He's kind of an idiot to a degree. So having him accidentally kill Boba, to me, just was no, fucking hilarious. That was stupid. And, like, it is extremely disappointing. We didn't... I, I, I wish we had gotten a cool fight scene there, but we don't. And you're right. That's dumb. Thank you. You just got to forget time. about everything you know about Carbonite. There you we see, go. There we in go. In galaxies far, far away. <laughs> Carbonite will fuck you up, or will it? Uh, the Death Star is on schedule, and Vader wants to continue his search for Luke. But the em- oh wait, the Emperor came. I missed that whole scene. 
shit. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> well, the Emperor comes in and it's really, really freaky. And he has cool as shit. The Imperial Guard, the red. Yeah. There's nothing cool in those suits. So tight. Like, I, think, I think I missed that point. Especially I think that just, was the point between that and that when they're on the pimp yacht. Sorry about that. Especially yes. just set dressing wise. Like what, when we're talking about building a scene and making a scene look interesting looking mm -hmm. to have like this super shiny, glossy black surface all around you and then these Really red saturated guard. Well, that's that's that. just, it's white, 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 white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Red. red. It's so fucking awesome. God, very, very so cool. cool. Also, I, all those guys got fired after this, right? And, like they let him die, and yeah. the Death Star get blown up. Like you're a terrible. Well, no, guard. they all died. I, I can't imagine they escaped, right? And the second I was gone, I'd be like, did you guys not play Star Wars Battlefront Two? It's true. No, I did. No, don't play. It. I do love at the end though. Like, you know, what like happens? Luke dragging him out. Luke Dragon Vader out. Like, I just, I really wanted Vader to be like, help! And one of them would be like, no, you <laughs> killed like all my friends. You <laughs> choked all my friends. It's true. It's true. Like, I'm not, let's not help him this time. Uh, the Death Star is on schedule and Vader wants to continue his search for Luke, but the Emperor tells him to chill, man. In time, Luke will come <laughs> to them and together they'll turn Luke to the dark side of the Force. Back on Dagobah, Luke meets up back up with Yoda, who is old and weak now. He's 900 years old. So, in like the span of a month or two, he gained about 100 years. Uh, Luke, tells him he needs Yoda uh, Yoda's help to complete his training but Yoda tells him no more training do you require already know you that which you need and then Luke goes then I am a Jedi and he's like do you feel like a Jedi do <laughs> did I fucking say that <laughs> you're not a Jedi yet uh, you goes, saying oh. that makes you less of a Jedi <laughs> yeah. he's like no you, you have to ask yeah. <laughs> you know you're not a Jedi he goes oh not yet one thing remains Vader you must confront Vader then only then a Jedi will you be? Uh, Luke asks Yoda if Vader is his father, and Yoda tells him he, your father he is. Uh, Yoda tells him that this is unfortunate. Not that uh, that that Vader told him, but rather that Luke rushed to meet him without completing his training. Then uh, he reminds him that anger and fear and aggression are the tools of the dark side. Um, do not underestimate the power of the Emperor or suffer the fate of your father. Uh, suffer the same fate as your father, and when I'm gone, you will be the last Jedi. Pass on what you've learned. There's another Sky, and then he tells him there's another Skywalker. Uh, and you know, oh, Jesus Christ, Nick. <laughs> no, what you write? There's another Skywalker, and you know what her tongue feels like in your mouth. Uh, uh -huh. It's uh -huh. true. I wrote it. I wrote it's it. True. It's true. I'm sorry, guys. Hey, that but wasn't don't worry, your guys. fault, Nick. She knew all along. You're right. Don't worry. Guys. <laughs> she. We'll you, get to that. She has your blood in her body, and you had her tongue in your mouth. Like when you <laughs> tasted her, did it kind of taste like your own hand? Uh, <laughs> with that, I see. I Yoda don't, dies. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Luke isn't sure he can go on alone. Thankfully, Obi-Wan's Force Ghost continues to visit him for a little chat. Uh, your father was seduced by the dark side. When that happened, he ceased being Anakin and became Darth Vader. Uh, and Luke's like, I can't kill my father. And then Ben's like, if that's true, then the Emperor has already won. And Luke's like, or... I just don't kill him, and I win. And Ben's like, I didn't know. Oh, I didn't th know well, that third option. That's so, an option, yeah. The third option, sure. right? Yeah. Uh, Yoda spoke of another, and he goes, "Yes, your twin sister. To protect both you from uh, both of you from the Emperor, you and your twin sister were hidden." Uh, Luke figures it out. Leia, she's my sister, and a really good kisser. Uh, back at the Rebellion fleet meetup, Mon Mothma gives everyone a mission briefing. We've discovered the location of the new new star, Death Star, which is orbiting the forest moon of Endor. Uh, the weapon systems aren't operational, and the majority of the fleet is spread out about the galaxy looking for the Rebellion, so we gotta knock out that shield generator on the surface of Endor, and then take this puppy out. Uh, once that's out of the way, the fighters can lead, move in, uh, and Lando will, will be leading them. Uh, they've stolen an Imperial shuttle, which will sneak a small strike team onto Endor and take out the shield generator. And then Lando's like, I wonder what crazy bastard they got to do that job. And she goes, General Solo, is your team ready? And he's like, that's right, man. My dude. That's right. Uh, Leia and Chewie are in, too. And then Luke's like, so am I! And everyone's like, yo, we're having a meeting, bro. Like, just cool. Like, cool out. So am I. I used to kill rats back <laughs> in my own planet. Like, get just, the fuck out of here. Just be like, that is king. Is he still talking about Bagus <laughs> This guy sucks. <laughs> this fucking Jedi Knight. He's still talking about Bagus King? I, again, this is another thing for me that I feel fell flat, where it's like, this is supposed to be the team. It's back together. Back They're together. about to go. It's like, no. Instead of it's annoying. Luke comes out like, "Hey guys!" and like you hear the fucking audience clap. It's because they like they're not separated for that long. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. it doesn't feel like a yeah that kind of. Get it's been moment. like we got to build a team. A few days. Yeah, like when I don't see you guys all weekend, I don't get all that that jacked up to see you. Han loans land of the Falcon to lead the attack wow. on the Death Star. And the <laughs> <laughs> nice. I just love that you said that. We kept lock eyes, and we both have. Empty thoughts where I know both of us are like, I don't even know what to think about that. Like, I don't either. Uh, <laughs> 
Han takes one last look at the Falcon before they all head off to Endor. Back on the Death Star, the Emperor orders Vader to send the fleet to the far side of Endor. Uh, they'll stay there until called for. Han and the gang approach Endor, uh, approach the, the fleet that's above Endor and transmit the clearance code. Uh, Luke has a feeling that Vader is on the command ship. Vader can feel him too. Uh, Luke is in danger in the entire mission. He shouldn't have, I shouldn't have come. I shouldn't have come because Vader can feel him. Realizing uh, Luke is on the shuttle, shuttle Vader gives uh, the order to clear the shuttle and let the team land in Mere Woods. Uh, man. <laughs> Let me tell you right here, man, when they get off, these costumes are dope. I love everything about the costume design of all the scouts, of the, mm. the, the rebels and the empire. So cool. So great. Uh, they approach the field generator, run into a squad of uh, stormtroopers, or I guess scout troopers. Uh, Han and Chewie volunteer to take them out. And of course, Han fucks it up by snapping a branch. Thankfully, Chewie is joining the spot with his crossbow, uh, but Leia spots two more uh, biker scouts, is what they're called. So they all hop on speeder bikes. And oh my God, I wanted one of these so fucking bad when I was a kid. I still want and one I now. still do. Perfect yeah. design, man. Kev, if we had two speeder bikes, we'd, just, we'd take them to lunch every day. Oh, oh, every day. Shine. Dude, Every donuts. single day. Oh my I, uh, I think it's like the reason why I was so attracted to the the aesthetic of a scout trooper was like it's the same damn reason, helmets are so damn. It's the cool. same reason why I love like Master Chief as a as a suit. Like I love that visor. I yeah, just it's love. Cool. It's just such a cool. For me, it's like, the practical. nose part that like just structures it so it's well. Yeah. yeah. Also, the little backpacks. Can't forget those. And those so. were the ones that I played with the most at Legos. Yeah. Like I was, oh, yeah. I was always 100%. a scout trooper. They just had so a much dumb. more functional and cooler helmet for yeah. sure. Uh, one of my friends, by the way, had a swing set. That was a Star Wars theme swing set, and so like we had a slide, but the swing itself with a speeder bike. So you got on it, and you oh, pull, pull, pull. Awesome. It was so fucking cool. It just went like it didn't go that far. It just went like this. Man, like, hey, that was enough. Like, My yeah. imagination so would go cool. wild. I know. Yeah. Uh, I think at one point his mom's like, you got you to stop riding that thing. Now. We got your mom's here. You got to go. Like, oh, <laughs> every oh, once in a while, I had pegs on the back of my bike, and every once in a while, I'd put my feet back, and it like kind of in that position, <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. and I'm like, this yeah, is what it true. feels this like. <laughs> uh, two more scouts joining the chase, and Luke splits up with Leia uh, to divide and conquer. Leia's thrown from her bike, but her scout smashes into a tree. Luke is thrown from his bike as well. Uh, thankfully, he's got his uh, lightsaber, and when the thing circles back around to kill him, he deflects the bolts, which is dope as shit, yep. and then cuts the nose off of it, sending that poor son of a bitch into a tailspin to death. <laughs> ha. Uh, Luke jogs collapsed back. Collapsed lungs, broken oh, ribs. Guy's dead. <laughs> uh, Luke jogs back to the strike team, but Leia's nowhere to be found. Uh, Luke, R2, Chewie, uh, C and C-3PO, and Han all head off to find Leia, and they order the strike team to go to the field generator and set up camp. Uh, out in the forest, Leia is awoken by Wicket the Ewok, who has a dope-ass rap song in the animated show that we did about a year and a half ago. At first, Wicked is a little aggressive, but after Le uh, Leia offers him a little snack snack, they become best friends. Uh, they get attacked by two scouts, and Wicked hits one with the shin with a tree branch, which is exactly the distraction Leia needs to ice both of them. Uh, Vader tells the Emperor that a small rebel force penetrated the shield and landed on Endor, and the Emperor is all like, I know. And Vader's like, you want to just give me the plan, bro? Come on, <laughs> like, you want to just keep, like, why do you always have to withhold information from me? It's not cool. The Ewoks, a little fact for you. The name Ewoks was inspired by Miwoks, meaning people, a Native American tribe that lived in Marin and Southern Sonoma County in Northern California. <laughs> Most of, if not all of, the Endor stuff was shot in the Bay Area, either there or some in Golden Gate Park. <laughs> That's um, cool. The word Ewoks never actually said in Return of the Jedi, That's and right. neither were the names of any individual Ewoks, although both appear in the credits. Uh, shout out to Wicket, played by a young Warwick Davis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who will go on to play Flitwick. Yeah. No. Yeah. So yeah. X. Uh, then Vader tells the Emperor that Luke is on the planet, and the Emperor has foreseen that Luke will come to Vader, and that Vader will bring him before the Emperor. His compassion for Vader will be his undoing. And it's like, ah, it's really mean. Luke, Chewie, Han, and the droids find Leia, speed her by wreckage, but no trace of her. Chewie finds a dead animal carcass and immediately starts clawing at it like the big dumb animal that he is, Fucking and all of them get caught in a big so net. So dumb. Thankfully, Why are they all standing so close <clears throat> to it? Thankfully, R2 uh, is Johnny on the spot with his little mini circular saw that drops them into a swarm of Ewoks. As they get up, the Ewoks want to kill the humans until they spot C-3PO, who they revere as a god. Uh, they take everyone back to the treehouse and, and try to eat Han, but Luke uses his force to make C-3PO a god and scare the droppings out of those little furry fuckers so they let everyone go. Uh, you get a feeling though some of them are still like, hey man. I still want to eat you. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, These so sick fucks were going to burn him they're alive him, for dinner. R2 as well. Uh, they're reunited with Leia, who has really, really integrated herself very quickly into Ewok life because mm -hmm. she comes out super earthy and shit. Where'd you get this Why? costume from? What a weird choice, man. It's very strange. Looking at it and now, then she I'm wears like, it again later. She does. I'm like, what? I'm where, just, where? It's very comfortable. What Ewok? What a freakishly tall Ewok used to dress like that? Your you know? Yeah, the hairdressers like, and shit. 
Yeah, oh it's just yeah, it's all these little silly hijinks. Uh, it's I don't mind. You don't think Ewoks about has a people. It just adds it. up. You know, yeah. that's the thing. Uh, later that night, e, uh, they all take a moment to chill uh, and see through. Uh, the rest of the strike team, by the way, has to sleep out in the cold. Sadly, uh, that night, C three up through Bo tells the Ewoks the story of how they blew up the first Death Star, and he uses really cool sound effects. And I so used to love cool. this. Uh, this and scene then, I enjoy. Yeah, it's yeah, a great, great scene. All the little Ewoks, too, all Getting excited. Yeah. Yeah. And they love the story so much, they decided to make uh, Han and the entire gang part of the tribe. Wouldn't it be funny if they just kept trying to eat Han, though? Like, you know, like, hey, man, <laughs> what are these days? Little, people, <laughs> little do you know, Kevin, that's the first podcast that's ever existed. It's true. Audiobook, wow. yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. It was wow. a long C-3PO. time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who did the plot better, C-3PO or Nick? Wow. Yeah, definitely C-3PO. He has really cool sound effects, but they sound like kind of like that you're playing them through, like, Cool Greg's jam box. Yeah. The Ewoks... <laughs> The Ewoks all agree to help them assault uh, their assault on the uh, shield generator. Out on the walkway, Luke asks Leia about her mother to take a moment. It's a very intense moment. Uh, <laughs> you just put together that word. Like, what, jam box? Is it jam even box? called a jam box? I mean, no, it's like, there it's is like a, an old term, right? Yeah, there's, there's an old brand called yeah. Jambox. It was like the cheaper <laughs> version of the thought, Bose. That's, what I, that's I what I thought. Uh, out on the walkway. God. Shut up, Andy. You know what? <laughs> It's not easy being constantly judged and perfect all the time. It's like when I was in when I was in a uh, in and art school. All constantly the time. judged and perfect. <laughs> God damn it, Nick. <laughs> that just reminds me when I was when I was in art school taking like three D art for like you know three D design and stuff. My friend would be like, "What's Andy working on?" Like he's we using that like virtual builder and like that's not what it's called. But you just like <laughs> that's in your head. Now. You get, you, it's creative and, and you get the gist. Out on the walkway, Luke takes a moment to ask Leia about her mother, who uh, who is also his mother, but she don't know that yet. He tells her. Uh, what do you remember about her? You know, those 30 seconds that you may have been around while she was alive. It's just Very so strange. This whole scene, I hate for reasons that we've all talked about already. But on top of that, I just don't appreciate that when we go forward, and I'm not going to spoil anything, but I just wish that it, the prequels would at least line up with the little information that it's we so were given. so little information. You know? They didn't it's, even bother it, trying, man. No, it's very bizarre. They didn't even bother trying. It's like, all right, or Leia's wars. just lying. Yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah. you know she I mean? says all she says is I have just nothing really, just images of her, like which you might be able to remember. No, she was kind. No. She says, yeah. I mean, she looked kind. I mean, did Natalie Portman not look like a kind person as she was dying in childbirth? <laughs> God, I, we got to keep going because I'm about to start talking shit. Uh, let's see. Uh, he tells Leia, he's like, look, I got to go to Vader. He's my father. I have to go face him. Uh, and then Leia tells him, like, holy crap, like, you got to, don't do that. Just cut and run, man. Get out of here. Um, and then Luke says, no, uh, if he doesn't make it back, she's the only hope. She has the same power he has. Uh, the force is strong in my family. My father has it. I had it, had it. I have it. And my sister has it as well. And then Leia gets the dress. She's like, oh, that's why the kiss felt so awkward. Luckily, we never did that again, except for that one time we were drinking that blue milk. Yeah. What? <laughs> what was that noise? I don't even know, guys. Uh, 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 he's, comes he's concerned, in. too. Wait, real quick. Is it, was this a suicide mission for Luke? Like, was it, what was his yeah, plan to go? I think so, yeah. I think he didn't to shut it down and get well. it blown up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The question was this, though. Like, he's like, you got to go on without me and become a Jedi. And she's like, how? Yeah. Like, who, who the fuck whoa, am I supposed bro. to do that, bro? Like, I've known I'm not Ray. For... I can't just train myself on a Remember rock. Remember Obi-Wan? <laughs> He'll come around again. As well, she'll ghost. be. Yeah. Well, she should have been like, well, I mean, how? Like, that shit's fucking hard. And yeah. Like, well, and he goes, look, just go up to a high cliff and, no, sh- and hit a rock. Get a little fucking robot and have Obi-Wan just like do it. And he's like, oh, there you go. Now I now I can do it. Yeah. You super know? easy. You just got to do a handstand and have a little, little tiny Ewok and just sit on your foot. Nope. <laughs> That's easy. <laughs> uh, let's see. Han comes in and gets super jealous. And then Leo uh, was having a deep conversation with Luke. He apologizes as they hug. He's like, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get jealous. Leia handles this horribly. Is she Ron in Harry Potter? Like, what's going on? Oh, she just the lie. nailed it. He nailed it. I mean, that's right. That's, that's how Ron handled things. That's how she handled She's things. She's overwhelmed with the information that not only is she Luke's sister, but Darth Vader is her dad. And she just wants to be held. She just goes, hold me. And also, Han's like, okay. Fuck. She's coming to terms that she's been making out with her brother, you know? Yeah. Now she's really Ew. conflicted because she's kind of like, that's the memory I've been holding on to all these late nights where I've been by myself. Me and Luke makes two. God. Just keep going. All right. <laughs> uh, Luke sneaks over. <laughs> by to, uh, myself, me and Luke makes two. <laughs> 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 a good joke of this show is just making fun of Nick. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> totally worth it. Totally worth it. Uh, Luke uh, finally meets back up with Vader and he calls him father uh, for the first time and Vader's like oh my special little boy <laughs> you know what I mean he's like oh. 
We're going to go for some Dairy Queen later. Uh, Vader compliments Luke on the construction of his new lightsaber. And he says this is very impressive. Uh, and Vader... Um, and he wants Vader to come with him and tells Such Luke. Such a dad moment, you know? Like, nice. Yeah. nice. Yeah. You did this Good on your job, own? Man, yeah. I know. Uh, and Vader tells Luke that it's too late. Luke's like, just come with me, man. We could just bounce out. We get some DQ. And he's like, no, man, I can't. It's too late. The Emperor will show Luke the true nature of the Force. He is your master now. And he goes, then my father is truly dead. And there's a lot of, like, platitudes these guys are talking in for how much they walk this shit back in about 15 minutes. Doesn't matter. Uh, the next morning... The Ewoks tell the Rebel Strike Force there's a secret entrance uh, on the other side of the ridge to the chill generator. They're like, cool, man. These guys are really working out. Glad they didn't eat Han. Up in space, the Rebel fleet gets in position to attack the new new Death Star. Uh, Admiral Akbar calls the ball as they jump into hyperspace. Uh, down on the moon of Endor, one of the Ewoks jumps on a speeder bike and draws most of the scouts. They're like, oh, shit. And then he, but it turns out, this kid, these cats know what they're talking about, man. Mm -hmm. He draws one of them away, a bunch of the speeder bikes away. Leaving I was only like, oh, this guy's dead. Yeah, he's dead as doornails. And then he catches the vine. Alive. He's, he's fine. Great. It's going to be good. Uh, up on the but desk. is he good? Did he survive? We're going to have to find out in a second. Oh, no. Let me tell you about our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Escape the Invasion. Have you ever wondered what you'd do if you found yourself in the middle of a post-apocalyptic world that has been ravished by a deadly virus inflicted by aliens? I know Kevin Coelho has every night of his life. If you're listening to this podcast, you've probably wondered, can you survive the apocalypse? I'm having a lot of trouble saying apocalypse. It's okay. We're just going to run through this right now. You need to survive because I don't know that I'd be able to make it. For the makers of Hunt a Killer, the popular true crime mystery subscription game comes Escape the Invasion, the sci-fi game where you are a survivor on a rapidly dying earth after an alien invasion. The plot, you find refuge in a government bunker, but is it safer than the outside world? You'll have to find out. This is a cool thing. It's essentially an escape room, but they send you it in monthly increments in, in, uh, in a box, and you have to figure out a bunch of clues to see what's going on. Uh, this is from the makers of Hunt a Killer. Uh, my friend Curran loves this. Him and his friends do it all the time. I'm very excited about this one here. Just for you guys now, you can go to escapetheinvasion.com slash morning for 20% off your first box. That's escapetheinvasion.com slash morning for 20% off your first box. Escapetheinvasion.com slash morning. And also, shout out to Manscaped. Support for Kind of Funny Morning Show comes from Manscaped, who is number one in men's below-the-belt grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Oh, I really love that they did that. Uh, Halloween is right around the corner, and you don't want to spook someone with your scary bush. Oh, man. We've all been there, you know, trying to trim downstairs, trying to make it all look good. Little Trimmy Tim. Little Trimmy Tim. You know what I'm talking about, Kevin? Yeah. Then things go bad. Things go awry. Next thing you know. There's blood where there shouldn't be. Uh, now that's spooky. Inside the perfect package, you'll find the electric trimmer called the Lawnmower 2.0. This waterproof and skin safe technology will protect you from nicking your pumpkins. <laughs> and of course, let's not forget about the crop preserver and anti chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. Uh, the perfect package 2.0 also includes anti chafing performance boxer briefs that keep your package cool and smelling fresh all day. Andy has been using these boxer briefs, and I assume, I can't say it on first hand, but I assume that his crotch is smelling fresh. Uh, it's time to get clean and mean with this perfect package 2.0. You can get 20% off and free shipping with the code MORNING at manscapes.com. Stay sexy this Halloween. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code MORNING at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code MORNING. Whoa, we've been going 55 minutes already. Oh, two in there. Yeah, it's, it's going fast. Down on the moon of Endor, uh, excuse me, up on the Death Star, Vader takes Luke to meet the Emperor for the first time. Luke tells him that he'll never turn to the dark side, which doesn't really matter anyway, because uh, we'll all be dead soon. And the Emperor's like, will we? You mean because your friends are going to come attack us? I know. They're walking That's into a trap. Okay. It was I who allowed the rebels to know the location of the shield generator. It's quite safe from your pitiful little band. Uh, and then back down on the planet before Han and the gang can finish planting bombs in the shield generator. They're ambushed by Imperial forces. Oh, no, it's a it really was a trap. Meanwhile, the fleet comes out of hyperspace, but they can't get a read on the shield because they're being jammed. And then Lando goes, but how could they jam us if they didn't know we were coming? Uh, they knew we were coming. And then Akbar goes, it's a trap! Mm -hmm. And we get the best internet meme ever. In that yeah. one set before the yeah. internet even existed. Yeah, it's great. Uh, a fleet of TIE fighters come out of nowhere and start lighting shit up. The Emperor makes Luke watch the carnage outside. Luke looks uh, to his lightsaber and the Emperor like wants, he's like, give in to your anger, man. He wants him to give in to anger. He's like, pick that up and strike me down and your transformation will be complete to the dark side. And Luke's like, <sighs> Woo, Dude, another good want. moment of like, oh yeah, you see that? That's right you there, that, isn't dude? it? You want oh, take it. I know you want take it. Take it. Just use it. I, that it. shit yeah. is so good. Obviously, Emperor's so great. But the shots of Lando and the, the fleet kind of flying through, the most visually stunning three seconds in the whole franchise, oh, I think. Oh, so good. 
the th- theatrical cut, it's not CG. Like they're going through and you see the Falcon going next to all these cruisers <laughs> and the TIE fighters. I'm like, what the fuck? So good. Uh, let's Wait, see. Quick, I love the shot they do where it's the Emperor sitting down, Luke standing, and then them looking out of the window really and like cool. all the ships and him yep. being like, they're your be friends, fucked. man. Yeah. They're dying. Yeah. Your uh, watch. Back on Endor, Han and the gang watch. are in big trouble as they're being held captive by a bunch of stormtroopers until the Ewoks come to the rescue and ambush the hell out of all of them. Uh, Han does some really bad judo as he breaks loose. Uh, the code of the door has changed, so Han and Leia uh, need R2 to break them in. Uh, up in space, Lando and Wedge do their best to keep the Imperial fighters away from the cruisers. Only the fighters are attacking. I wonder what those uh, de- uh, Star Destroyers are doing. Uh, they're keeping the fleet from escaping because guess what? This station is fully operational. But you didn't know that, Luke. Did Surprise, you? That's bitch. the other thing I got up my big old sleeve. Mm. This thing's got a operational. weapon. Operational. giant sleeve. <laughs> they fire up the new Death Stars and blast a rebel cruiser to pieces. Admiral Akbar sounds the retreat, but Lando talks, talks him out of it. He says, you gotta give me more time. Han will come through. This is, our, this is the only time we can actually do this. And then I'm like, damn, dude. Why These guys are taking have, risks. Why do they have the frigger? The is it friggers? Fr- frigates? 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 frigates there? Well, they're cruisers. I don't know. There's like a. Uh, it just oh. seems like why would you bring the medical frigate? Like have them come after you guys have I, won. And you I want, don't you know? know because that's a good point because mm. most of the fighters have uh, hyperdrives. Right. So you would so assume, okay, we got to bring the cruisers out. because that, that they're holding the fighters. Mm-hmm. But maybe they just wanted to pack more firepower. Remember, they thought the Death Star didn't have any defense capabilities, so sure. maybe the cruisers sure. needed to take on any star destroyers that were around. Who knows? R two reaches. Then why didn't why didn't they fight? I feel like they the whole time they're just kinda like, you know, like either going towards it or going away very slowly. Uh, I, I, I don't just know. love that little fucker that's hanging with Lando the whole Dude, time. Uh, Do you? What's his name? Nibno. I, I looked Nibnub. it up Nibnub. and it's like yeah, Nibnub. Nibnub. I hate how wet his flaps look. <laughs> so wet. Oh, just, they look so wet. He just has so to, he's wet. Just, he's like a his goopy ass. Like, <laughs> 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 you know he's stoned out of his <laughs> mind. Yeah, he's, he's like just, the, he's your cool stoner friend from high yeah. school. He's like, man, I fly better when I'm stoned. And everyone's like, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, R2, oh, uh, back down on the surface, R2 reaches Han and Leia and starts hacking the door to the shield generator until a stray laser bolt shorts out of circuits. Uh, Han decides to hotwire it, which is not in well, because it just but brings like, Does R2 die there? It out the blast doors. No. No. Why'd no. they treat it kind of like he did? No, he just got, he's a droid, he can't die. He's firing back up. That was, that was a scary scene, I remember. Where, like, the first time was a long time. Well, I mean, you get the feeling that he's definitely dead, and it's like, yeah. no, why did this happen? Totally. But he's not. Should so have killed okay. him off. Yeah. Uh, I then, mean, they. Uh, go ahead, sorry. No, 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 no. I think I was. In- uh, then things get dire for the Ewoks. One of them dies as the other one cries over this body. And this is the point where I was just traumatized as a child. Fuck mm. you, George Lucas. Uh, Lando suggests moving the fleet closer to the Star Destroyers so they can't use the Death Star attack on them again without taking out one of their own, one or two of their own of their own ships. Uh, the Emperor just then starts really egging Lugan as he's like, I can feel your anger flowing. Uh, give in, man. Pull that lightsaber and strike me down. Come on. Let's do it. Go he's- ahead. Strike me down oh, yeah. with all of your hatred. Uh, and he goes, and he, then, then Luke does the cool thing where he's like, no. And then he immediately turns around and grabs it. And as he strikes it, Vader just blocks it. And he's like, come on, bro. And that shot. Got the, <laughs> the red and the green and the Emperor just, the Emperor just staring at him. Like, laughing. like, I got you, bro. Uh, Chewie and the Ewoks. Oh, excuse me. Um, Chewie and the Ewoks Tarzan over to an ATST and throw the pilots to their death. Literally Tarzan oh. over. Oh, that was a bad choice. Uh, they jump in and blast another ATST to smithereens. Uh, this turns the tide for the ground wars. The Ewoks just start getting vicious as fuck. How they knew the ATST walker was going to be on that specific path where they could just d- like get a lot. Why did they set those logs up? Yeah, that's. I was thinking that too. Like there was a lot of elaborate setup. I'm sure there was a lot of rock gathering that <laughs> yeah, happened. You know, this is a solid two week setup that they were like, guys, yeah. we're not going to get this done. And then, now. and then at the end of all the gathering, they're like, N- these rocks aren't big enough. <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, we have to Especially drop for this. The bat one. The we have to the drop this from like eight stories up in order to hurt this fucking yeah. guy with a helmet. Like. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> uh, Leia gets, takes a blast to the shoulder, and uh, as Han's looking over, her uh, uh, two stormtroopers sneak up on him, and then Leia kind of does the cool thing where she shows him that she's got a blaster, and then Han goes, "I love you," and she goes. I know. No. Fuck yes. Like, and they're like, I love it. It's how they say it to each other. Now. It's yeah. perfect. That's great. Uh, and then she pulls it out and ices both of them. Up in the throne room, Luke is fighting Vader and kind of owning his ass until he decides to calm down and not fight. Uh, Vader don't play that game, though. He attacks Luke and tries to get uh, get him into it again. Love the sound design here, by the way. Uh, also, Luke uh, does a dope-ass backflip. And somewhere, somewhere, someone's like, you, your special Jedi power is going to be backflip. The pod racer's like, okay. on our end right now. 
Sorry, that was weird. <laughs> yeah, it was like it a really fucking pottery. Vader, right Vader also does like a little flip down the stairs. Yeah, like he gets hit, he, he, but then he, it's but a he back flips. Flips, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, okay. That's also is is this one we have like Vader kind of looking for him underneath, mm -hmm. like uh, the struts. Yeah. yeah, this is where he's being like, "Where are you?" And like out of <laughs> his voice is coming out of everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <He's> like, <"Where?" laughs> that scene was kind of awkward. Here. Oh, I love this. I, I love, I love it. I love it. I very much enjoy it. Because Luke's just sitting there, and you can just see a little bit of light on his face, mm -hmm. and he's listening. And his father's like, "I can." He's like, "I can feel. Like I can feel you." And that's right? when he like threatens. Well, this, this is where he says he can. He he says, uh, "I can feel you, the conflict in you." Right. And then he's like, "He's like, Father, I know there's still good in you." And then Luke proves him wrong and throws his lightsaber at him. <laughs> Which is just like he's like, nope, you're wrong, and then her, like curls the lightsaber, and it just cuts through everything. Wait, it's so Vader light. Th yeah, but, light yeah. Vader is. Uh, down on the so surface, cool. so rad. Down on the surface, Han tricks the Imperial troops into coming out. Uh, once inside, uh, the strike team plants bombs literally everywhere. He's like, I don't think there's enough here. And it's that comical shot where it just is reversed, and there's just bombs on every possible surface imaginable. Um, up in the throne room, Luke hides from Vader, who uh, reads his mind and his friends and figures out that Leia's his sister, and Luke's like, damn it! Why did I skip that chapter? I should have really read that chapter on Occlumency. Uh. <laughs> yes. See what I did there? I pulled it out of my Remember ass. Remember Occlumency? From uh. Harry Potter? Didn't go into your brain? You gotta he, push him out, push him out, way out. Voldemort would do that, remember? Yeah. Uh, your feelings have now betrayed her, too. If you will not Snape turn to really the dark side... It. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. If you will not turn to the the dark side, then perhaps she will. No! And man, Would this is like the part. That. This Luke is the no, song. She's like my it. sister. This is I love, I love her. her. Man, he gets pissed. Oh, so much. He takes it up a notch and utterly beats Vader <laughs> into the ground with a final blow that just cuts off his hand, his lightsaber hand. And then, of course, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry. Um, of course. Looking at his hand, realizing that he's given into his anger, and seeing his own hand, he realizes that he if he if he goes one step too far and kills his father, he will become him. So he stops. And the Emperor is super stoked about this. He tells Luke to kill his father, fulfill his destiny <laughs> by the Emperor. He's like, come on, man, kill him. He's like, kill him, man. Come come myself. And Vader's like, what the fuck, dude? That wasn't the plan. <laughs> that would be cool, man. We've known really each cool. other for decades. At this like point. literally decades. I've been your homie, and like I still of use to you. You could have two Sith people. Uh, That's not how it works. The rule too, man. Luke looks at his hand, looks at his father's hand, and goes, "Nope, I can't do this." And he look, he shuts his lightsaber down and throws it aside. And tells I don't like the that emperor, he chucks it. I feel like that's a dumb move. I mean, what's he gonna do, man? He's like, he tells the emperor, "You've lost." And then I'll he gets never it back. turned. Oh, you yeah. don't see it. Like, yeah, please no. But I just feel like they feel like it's it's like a like a, a gut reaction when you're walking out of a room. You just kind of grab it without thinking. It's a subconscious uh, thing. You know what I mean? God, that'd be like, so boom, cool to see. Got you it. know, how sometimes you're like. You get up in the morning and then you get in your car. You're like, how did, did I shower? I don't remember that because it's, it's all just in you here. Just it's, your, it. it's your yeah. shower Jedi mind training. Mm. Do you actually experience that? Sometimes. Huh. When I got out of the shower, sometimes I'm like, do I wash my hair? That's and totally I, different. Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes I just get in my own brain. I just go, I go through the steps and go, oh, wow, that's weird. I didn't realize. Yeah. Uh, Luke tells him he's failed. Luke will never different. join him. And this is when the Emperor goes, so be it. And it's like, not only did you take a risk here, yeah. well, Luke doesn't want to join you, so you're gonna you're gonna kill him. You think Vader's gonna be like loyal to you now? Hundred like, percent, probably. He's, yeah, he's like, just not cool. Uh, Han blows up the shield generator. Akbar gives the order to commence their attack run on the Death Star up in the throne room. The Emperor has another uh, proposition for Luke. If you will not be turned, I'm gonna electrocute you to death with my hand bolts. And Luke's like, shit, I didn't know you had those, man. This changes everything. So cool. Uh, now, young Skywalker. Like, when do I get that? <laughs> That's what I want. Uh, now, young Skywalker, you will die. And goes, she starts electrocuting the shit out of him. Vader, unable to see his son in pain, uh, screams, no, no. No, Which I, I had doesn't never... do that in the original. No, he didn't need oh, to. Okay, cool. Uh, like that's not something I remember. He really didn't need to because you in the original he just had a moment where he looks at Luke, looks at the Emperor, and then looks back at Luke, and then just moves. Is there? There's that's a shot where you can see on his reflection like Luke getting shocked, right? I don't or, know. No, no, it's Vader. It's Vader getting shocked. You can yeah. see Vader's so bones. Yeah, he when he, he lifts Emperor Palpatine into the air, and as he lifts him up, the shot radiates through his body, and you can sort of see it kind of radiating into his face. Kind of, that's what kills him. All that stuff. Yeah, and that's what really it broke takes all out the of him. electrical things. Worth noting, also, he was wheezing before this, so Luke really took it out of him. I don't know what he did mm -hmm. to him, but it just it was something horrible. Uh, Luke throws Palpatine over the bridge uh, down nope, into the Vader. giant map. Vader, excuse me. Vader throws Papa Juno the bridge uh, into the massive, massive air duct, and as he falls all the way down thousands and thousands of feet, uh, there's absolutely a massive no way explosion. He'd ever come back? Yeah, 
What's that? that? Lo- I'm saying there's no way he could ever come back from this. Well, we'll no see. one's ever truly gone, Tim. It looks so true. funny to me. Like the, the like him throw. Ah! It's, it's like when they dropped the fucking baby Voldemort into the thing. Like yeah, it was yeah, just yeah. like it was just like a static object. It was yeah. like get the fuck out of here, bitch. <laughs> like, get, out, get out of here, JPEG. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that he like explodes and there's, there's this just blue energy that kind of dissipates by the you know yeah, when it gets like out. It, like it kind of blinds them. Yeah, that wasn't cool. that bad. Uh, Lando and the X-Wings head toward the central power source of uh, the Death Star, and Lando knocks off the radar antenna on the top of the Falcon. I always like that scene because they followed that through with uh, yeah. The Force Awakens. Akbar gives the order to focus all firepower on the Star Destroyers to give the fighters a little bit more time, uh, and a kamikaze A-Wing takes out the bridge of a Super Star Destroyer, which causes Sick. it to smash into the Death Star. And I love how big, like, you get a sense of how big everything is when that thing smashes into the Death Star, and you're like, oh my god, that's, that's a big thing that it's mm-hmm. smashing into. Uh, let's see... Um, uh, Luke drags Vader's body over to his shuttle, and Vader asks him uh, to, t- to, to stop him and help him take off his mask so he can look upon his son for the first time with his own eyes. Uh, mm. Luke does so, and this is the first time we oh, actually see stuff. all of Vader's real face. Uh, he's got it's fragile, it's old, it's pale, and it's burned, and it's all scarred up. And a weirdly shaped head. He's got a little egg head. Yeah. I always thought it was like, a, like, a, like an egg. You know, or, you know like an olive with, a, with one of those uh, uh, pimentos in the middle of it? Mm. Or like a golden. Mm. It's like, what was the thing? What was this? Pop it. Let's pop it. Let's get in there. Yeah. Wasn't that just a scar? Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, yeah, yeah. from like. He looked like Humpty Dumpty. Yeah. Luke tells yeah, them that they have to go, <laughs> and Luke's like, "We gotta go, man. I want to save you." And his father goes, "You already have." Tell your, he goes, yeah. "You were right." Tell your sister you were right, mm-hmm. and then dies. Fucking awesome. Uh, then, I put it in there that says Anakin dies because at this point he was Anakin again, and I go, oh, "No, fuck what the last scene says." The Falcon and Wedge reach the power source of the Death Star, and uh, and they shoot, or they start blasting it apart, causing a chain reaction of fire that chases them out as they make their way toward the exit. Uh, seconds before being incinerated, the Falcon breaks clear of the Star Destroyer as a as it explodes in just a massively beautiful destruction with that cool little like power wave that comes off of it that I think they added in post. They did. Or, it yeah. wasn't in the original. Yeah, it's much better than uh, that. down on the surface. Leia can feel that Luke is still alive. Uh, Han gets a little jelly because Leia loves him, and Leia's like, dude. He's my brother. Okay, no, no. he's my brother. He's it's my brother, okay. dude. And it's Han's not like, like that. He's my brother. Han's like, that freaky yeah. shit. This is gonna yeah. work out real I, you, well you for me. You see that? Hit, like you see that turning in the in his head where he's just like, Whoa, he's like, I got a hot sister too. Yeah, I got a hot sister <laughs> that sells that Colombian cuckoo dust over a tattoo when we go what? party. Colombian cuckoo dust. Yes, we party. Uh, man, Han hot is Han's happy about that, but also confused. He kind of has that like, uh, okay, uh, and then he's like, you know, there was a deleted scene where he's like, wait, when did you know that? Did you know that? Like. When you were trying to make me jelly, like in the other movie, when you were making out with him in Med Bay, like, I always knew it. Yeah, but the, she says a line though to him, where it's like something along the lines of like, "You have nothing to worry about," or "Don't worry." I, I forgot what the exact line is. Cool, great. And like, he's my brother. It's not like that at all. He's my brother, is what she says. And then yeah, and then I kind of wanted Han to be like, "Well, what is it like?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's still something. There. Can we get shock mic up? A uh, uh, little out of order, but real quick. Sure. I just want to—I want to do a special Cool Greg effect of uh, okay, Return cool. of the Jedi because he watched it with me last night. What were your thoughts on Star Wars: Return of the Jedi? Yeah. I had no idea that's how Vader went out. I really thought maybe he dies and has like a little bit of a moment, but nah, he went straight sucker. Like I think I heard that he was on Ragu Bagu, <laughs> another <laughs> list. I think we should take him off. Like, Whoa, wow. he's not even a villain. There's anymore. no other bag. <laughs> he went yeah. straight sucker, <laughs> and you have to. I presume that's because he killed his his boss. Is that why? Like he was and disloyal then he was like, to Palpatine. Tell my daughter I'm good or whatever. That whole yeah. thing was trash. <laughs> wow. Thanks, cool guy. <laughs> All right, cool guy. Thank uh, you. Do, do you, does do you think anyone was like, hey, let's not like you know cremate this guy. Like he's a bad dude. Like you know, oh, I'm sure, but Luke is like, I don't give a fuck. Luke yeah, it looks like uh, body, I, man. yeah, I just killed like, the you Emperor stop and Vader, me, dude. Like yeah, I do? have a green glowing fucking stick of death, motherfucker. It would have yeah. been so much cool though. Let me hear me hear me out, Tim. Yeah. If it was green the whole time, and then he busted out a blue one, you're right. Uh, like how cool would nah, that have yeah. been? Because yeah. right. green to me is just more like a neutral sort of thing. But then you nah. bust out a blue one, like whoa, it's blue. Like yeah. that would. I just awesome. I, I always thought it would have been dope if he lo- if he lost the green one and took his dad's red one and just was like I'm gonna do red now because red's fucking cool fucking as shit. Cool as shit. But, and, and, Andy, I'm with you though because like connected to to Zelda, right? You start with like the green yeah. tunic. 
and then you can upgrade to the blue or red. Green is a common item. Well, yeah. Also, yeah. blue's been your favorite color forever, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's right so about that. Uh, that Green night, of there. course, Luke uh, does bury his father by setting him a fire, uh, and the Ewoks throw everyone a banging party. We see, and then party. we just see lots of needless CGI of the other planets like Naboo and Coruscant, and, and God, they uh, look so and, bad. And, Bring back Yup Nub, Tatooine. Uh, and they're all just partying. I guess news travels very, very quickly to the rest of these places that the, the Empire is dead. You think it would take a couple weeks to get everywhere, but whatever. Uh, now, here's the thing. In the theatrical version, we didn't get those cuts. Yeah. Instead, we get this Yub Nub song with yes. the Ewoks singing. It was like Muppets. Dude, written, dope. written by none other than Joseph Williams, son of Star Wars composer John. Uh, so Williams. good. And the lead singer, Toto. Nails. Oh, Toto. That's really? Awesome. Of Africa fame. Hell yeah, dude. Right. But the theatrical version, also lame. Song cool, all that stuff's great. You just get up there celebrating with the Ewoks, and then there's just a bunch of X Wings and Y Wings, like yeah. with fireworks. Yes. It is weird. I just like it because the, the, the end yeah. makes How it. How would you <laughs> celebrate? Tim, like, what are you gonna do, Tim? Not with fireworks in space. That's Tim, just not here, what I would do. Here's, I tell you how Tim would go celebrate. back, say hi to my family. Like Tim would celebrate like, by going to Volcano Curry and then going to bed really late and <laughs> sleeping yeah. in the next day. It would be stop, fantastic. Shit about I'm not talking Curry. shit about Volcano Curry. Just, just, it's just, it's just no. weird. Okay. And tone aligned. Your tone aligned. And you didn't save me. I asked you to save me one grain of rice so I could try it. You said every grain was like that little marble from the end of Men in Black, the original Men in Black. It was like a whole universe inside. Whole universe inside of each grain. I was like, cool. The aliens were playing with it. Then I got back, and you know what I found? A fucking small bucket of curry with a spoon in it. That's it. That's oh, all. That, that was cool, Greg's. Fuck, man. It looked good. During uh, an early story meeting with Kasdan, Lucas pitched an idea for Return of the Jedi that would have ended the saga on a very dark note. In the scenario, Luke and Vader engage in a lightsaber battle only to have Vader sacrifice himself to save his son and kill the Emperor, much like in the final film. But then as Luke watches Vader die, Lucas suggested that Luke takes his takes his mask off. The mask is the very last thing. And then Luke puts it on and says, now I am Vader. What? God, Kaz responding. That's what I think should happen. <laughs> Who said that? Kazdin. I'm Warren's really Kasdan. happy that they didn't go with that. The pair decided to scrap a second downer ending after the Empire Strikes Back, and they went with a happy ending. Wait, who, so who pitched that? Whose idea was Kasdan? That's a dumb idea. Wow. Lucas yeah. pitched the idea. Well, Kasdan Lucas was like, it. I like it. And then they ended up deciding. Yeah, and then they watched yeah, it and go, wow, awful. this is such a happy ending. I wonder if we, if we just let him bury his dad. It'll be like the whole thing comes full circle and he, everything's good again. And you're like, Wouldn't yeah, maybe cool? we should just stick there. Uh, as they well, celebrate, of course. Luke looks over and spots Obi-Wan, Yoda, and Hayden Christensen, <laughs> who was young for absolutely no reason. The end. That's well, the original died. one was so confusing. It's I remember so it wasn't just confusing. some random it's old an white old dude guy and that looks like, like the other I, old guy. But no, he's not doesn't. that old. He he's looks like he's 40. <laughs> But, but he was it, burned in the other thing. Like Yeah, but like so he doesn't look like him, you know? It's no, very dude, bizarre. I had no, no trouble when I was like five years old figuring too. out that Vader no, was we, Vader. We figure it out. Yeah. yeah. You know. But yeah. it's confusing. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. It's really fucking it's now, weird. more or less weird that hated Christians and going, oh <laughs> shucks. Yeah. God, I hate it too though. <laughs> the, the, last I hate shot of, the last shot of them and fucking he's weirdo. obviously looking in another direction than Obi and Yoda. From some other B. And he he's got like this like really like kind of sexy like um, like, well, so, he knows that Luke's down for family stuff. You know what's what it mean? called? Oh, um, and he's also gonna be like, Luke, no matter what you do, I'm a force ghost, so you can't stop me from just appearing in your room. And just, I'm gonna watch you. DJ land. Kento and uh, shoot uh, a most couple likely in chat, that, yeah. and uh, he, I took a photo of that and posted it on Instagram, and he replied that that was only Anakin's head. Like it was, it was the original body no. of. That, that's what he yeah. What? He said that, that oh, only no. Anakin Ted was comped onto the body. No, they put... That doesn't make any sense. The other guy was like fat. <laughs> yeah, he was like a fatter like old guy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Which Maybe still makes was. no goddamn sense. And I could be wrong. I'm sure, I'm sure we could bring up a comparison. Yeah, he, he wasn't fat. Like He just looked like a, like a like 40 year old man. dad. Yeah. He was, like, he was fate. He was he the actor like, that played the guy that was in the thing that like five seconds ago and you saw. And to be fair, in the timeline, he's about 40 years old. So you know, That wasn't the actor. I think it was. Really? The guy like that I, was in the helmet of Vader, yeah. yeah. Not really. was? Not, yes, that's why it but made sense. Skin cap. That's why it was like, Luke, you egghead. tell your sister you saved me. That was the actor, and that was that was the big kerfuffle, too, because they thought originally it was going to be David Prowess, who was the guy that actually played it. It was really fucked up. It, was wow. it does and not look like him at all. Luke, that's yeah. even so tell Prowess because that. he has hair, yeah. like as a force ghost. burn victim. And you can't see his weird egg-shaped head. Yeah. So that was... What a weird choice on both accounts. Like, having Hayden Christians just doesn't make any sense, because it's like... 
I don't know who older. that is if you're watching yeah, exactly. like the, these movies. Would, Does, would we have preferred it to not happen at all? Maybe we just don't get No, I thought it was moment. awesome that his dad mm. came full would, circle and was like, I'm good again we, and he gets to go be a good force ghost. It Should it have been a, a, like a, just a Vader? Like in the big suit? I mean, that's, you know, that's what He's we know. Like yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I don't think like there's any now. way to pull it off. Because someone yeah. didn't put my mask back but, on, so I'm going to have But also, like, mask. he's standing next to the dude that he killed. Make him look like a burn victim. I would have liked that best. Mm. That's how he looked when he died. Yeah, let's have him at the end of uh, Revenge of the Sith, but before he gets put into the yeah. Vader thing. So he's all, all the limbs Just are cut numb. off. <laughs> I'm into it, dude. God. Yeah, I think that, yeah, that's him. Is it just his head, though? It mm. is, yeah, it looks like it. Maybe it is, actually. Because it looks like they're pretty... Yeah. Oh, my God. Hayden Christensen's fucking terrible. Yeah, it's He's only his head. terrible. It wasn't his fault. That's what I remember fault. him. No, all the actors in the prequels were fucking bad, except Natalie you Portman and me. It was fantastic. the direction. Let's talk about it later. Wow, you're right. It was. It's wow, that's crazy. That's wild. I, I mean. remember him being way more pudgy. <laughs> But look at the look at the look he's looking. Yeah, why is it so mischievous? That's the kind of look that when I give Kevin, Kevin look. goes, no. Yeah, it's yeah. true. <laughs> it's true. It's hundred percent right. Like when I offered him some mini Kit Kats today, but I did it in a really suggestive he manner. Put he put it like, on his crotch no, and then he opened that. it like it was a. I don't no, even want to go into more detail. Some okay. other facts for you here. Uh, you the original teaser trailer for the film carried the name "Revenge of the Jedi." Yeah. In December 1982, Lucas decided that revenge was not appropriate as Jedi should not seek revenge and return to the original title um, because uh, I think it was Kazan was like, hey. Return of the Jedi is lame. Like well, that doesn't sound cool. We need to make it cooler. So they changed it to Revenge. And Luke was like, No, 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 no. We're, we're going to Return. Dude, we Return of the Jedi is awesome. They call Return. Uh, the fandom frenzy surrounding the third and supposedly final installment of the saga was at such a fever pitch with cast, crew members, and the public willing to leak any new information about the storyline they could. Lucas intentionally named the movie something completely different. He chose the fake title Blue Harvest, a play on the 1929 uh, Dashiell Hammett novel Red Harvest, and even featured the fake tagline Horror Beyond Imagination to throw fans off the trail, as well as to keep production costs down on the blockbuster, so location scouts wouldn't be price gouged if certain locations were used for the production. Some shady shit. But I saw people were like this. Wait, why is Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, and, and Harrison Ford in this weird horror movie? Wait, this is a Star Wars movie! <laughs> Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> uh, this is a actually a really cool thing. Uh, the movie was supposed to give audiences their first look at the Empire's homeworld of Had Abaddon. This city planet, an idea that would later be extrapolated in a Coruscant in the prequel trilogy, was supposed to be ground zero for much of the film's climax, including the lightsaber battle between Luke and Vader in the Emperor's throne room. Unfortunately, early 1980s lo logistics got in the way, and despite all the ILM res wizardry up until that point, they couldn't come up with a proper way to make a feasible effect look good, plus sets, models, or map paintings would cost too much. We worked on this Imperial City for a long time. Uh, it's elaborate and quite pretty, but you can only do a little bit of this or that. Huh. That's just cool. Yeah. And Coruscant's dope. <laughs> of course, yeah, as a concept. I stuff. talked a lot of shit about the, like, the adding the cities. It's cool that everyone was celebrating throughout it the thing. Is. And it was cool to see the cities, even in that shitty... CG rendering. It's just the <laughs> implementation thing. Yeah. The yeah. idea is great. Execution, not so much. The last one I got for you. Uh, the only cast member to shoot new material for the 1997 re-release was Femi Taylor. <laughs> uh, Femi Taylor was Ula, Nick. Ah. Ula. Uh, the slave girl fed to the Rancor in Jabba's palace. According to rumors, she was recommended a Lucasfilm and ILM for reshoots because she was in better shape than she had been 15 years earlier. Her scenes in the special edition are a mix of new and original footage. Wow. Weird. Wow. Good for her. That's weird. So that's wow. all I got for you there. Wow. Is Seven that? syllables in the middle. You'll need five for the first and last sign. If you're not poetic, no need to fret it. Haikus don't need to rhyme. Haiku in the review. Haiku in review. There we go, baby. That was pleasant. It's cool when it just ends, right? That's yeah. I mean, it really, it really I like is. I like you told us to stop. Uh, you can go to <laughs> patreon.com slash kind of funny to write your review in haiku form just like Chad Betteridge did. Small bear-like buddies, but you know they're packing heat. Ewok away, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll take it. That's I'll take it. On. Uh, Chase Winter says, force ghosts in the air. Vader zapped beyond repair. Friends with murder bears. Oh, that would have been so great if there was if bears wasn't plural. Like it wouldn't have made sense, but like mm. none of the other got words it, are plural. Got it, got it. Uh, Jacek says Boba Fett eats it. Green women are hot as hell. What's there not to love? Uh, <laughs> Mitch Crasson says lightsabers are cool. Can I have an Ewok friend? Java is real fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Lucas Curran says she wants him to know as carbonite waits below. I love you. I know that's from Empire. That's great. Yeah. 
Dope shit. That's what we got for <laughs> Haiku in review, ladies and gentlemen. Did you hear that? It was kind of like a different, like a. You kind of used a different yeah. almost box. Like, yeah. He's a different foot pedal. Yeah. 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 What's up, guys? Welcome to Rad Guys Talk Bad Guys. I'm your host, Andy Cortez, where we rank the villains of the Star Wars universe. And I'm joined by all of my co hosts, which last week kind of regretted Couple having so many yeah, sure, co sure. But so far, our rank, uh, rank one is Vader's choking hand. Number two is Tark Vader. Where do we put the Emperor Vader? Oh, this has to go I, number one. No, 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 yeah, no. You Emperor. can't include Vader, who has a, like a, a face a turn in this arc. one. Yeah. He's still the villain, though. Yeah. No, he's no. not. At the end... Dude, he's the one in the fight scene. It, be, it should be just the Emperor, and yeah. he should have number one spot, because he's But it's not dope. like a Harry Potter thing where he took off his mask and was like, oh, you're not even Vader. Whoa, like he was a bad guy. Yeah, but then he wasn't at the end, yeah. so we shouldn't count it. Did Back me for, up, Nick. I, I mean, I, for me, for like I think one I think minute. the Emperor and Jabba are good enough. I think those two are top top tier. Sure, Jabba I think awesome. no matter what way you cut it, they're number, number one. one. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. But yeah, it's like I, 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 I let's call it Jabba Palpatine. That sounds like a dope ass Jabba team. <laughs> Jabba team. There it is. <laughs> Bubble tea. <laughs> So there you go. Yeah. Mix and milk, so rank right? one is Bubble Tea. Number two is <laughs> Vader's Choking Hand. Number three, Tark Vader. That go that's it for the original trilogy. Wow. Yeah, the Emperor can't week. not be number one. You know, yeah. this is the There's amalgamation no of evil. It's perfect. Man. Next week best. we will start on the prequels. And I can't yeah. wait to see where Big Mall Daddy oh, goes. Right. Oh, Let's go oh, shopping oh, at the mall, baby. Uh, and pop with his a one line. Gotta fucking so love it, awesome, dude. dude. Uh, now it's time to rank. The Star Wars universe here, baby. Uh, number one currently is Empire. 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 Oh, oh my oh, god! Yeah. Oh, god. Oh, god. I I god. Thought, we were so close. I was worried. I about it. thought, I thought he, was, he wasn't gonna do it. I, uh, boring, this I don't think he was your boy. Everyone <laughs> like it. Everyone say good, good, bad, lose. I say no way. I remember. <laughs> good, good, bad, lose. Yeah. Good, good, bad, news. <laughs> That's when it's good news, good news, then bad news. <laughs> he was, yeah. he was my, my favorite comment bug, last yeah. week was the, uh, that Watto seems to love talking into every mic. <laughs> <laughs> God, at least there was a goal with McGonagall. This is just chaos. This <laughs> one! <laughs> They do the land is so dirty. They take them out. <laughs> That's not English. I don't know what language that is. They do the land is so dirty. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're gonna watch your movie next week. I'm gonna eat this honker. <laughs> ah, this is a sore spot for Wado when they kill him. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You cared for him. You cared for How him. How much again. spit do you think like inside he's of that? My own boy. Yeah. A little pumpkin. Yeah, he's a little pumpkin. I raise him right. I put him in the nice chains. I say you work right. on the machine, little boy. Uh, oh, you, you put him in the comfortable chains. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah he was well, a slave. You understand that? Oh, uh, he liked it. Okay. Uh, yeah. The best part! <laughs> <laughs> Guys, the chest hair is so uneasy, it's so well, uncomfortable. I'm little Annie the slave, right? Mm -hmm. I get these machines in, uh, I get these turbochargers. <laughs> okay, what do the turbocharged <laughs> machines do? Uh, they drive, uh, they do the race with the pod. The pod race. I get these things in, I see, hey, there's a hole, <laughs> there's a hole in it. <laughs> The hole in the pot <laughs> racer. <It's a> <laughs> God, I hate looking. At the fucking eyes. It's really it's difficult. The size of a pumpkin and the lady, the lady. It's the size of a pumpkin. We'll have to see next week what little Annie does in the <laughs> pot racer. Size of a pumpkin. <laughs> Thank, thanks, Wado. Oh God. Uh, <laughs> God, you killed little Annie. Yeah. He just misunderstood it. I just, I want to. <laughs> Sam, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw this down for you. Like, please uh, do. McGonagall was like lawful evil, and then Watto is just chaotic. chaotic there you go. Yeah, there it's you chaotic go. everything. I wanna, I, I wanna, <laughs> before we, before we end this, I want to let everyone know that I was a little concerned beforehand that Greg would might have missed this because we're wrapping up a little earlier. So I slacked Joey, or I slacked General. I said, "Hey, is Greg, are you coming in for Watto?" And then Joey very calmly said, "He's on a call right now, so probably not." Question mark. And then Greg came in, and then Joey in all caps said, "He made me type that. I'm so sorry." <laughs> 
<laughs> why? Because he's you fucking are chaotic. Why? Do you understand? Oh my god, the current this is rankings what we are deal with. number one, Empire Strikes Back. Number two, A New Hope. Where are we ranking Return of the Jedi? Uh, I gotta put this in number three. What? I really do. Wow. I love. I, I, oh, I mean, I Empire. Hate Empire this. I hate it you can't go so above much. Empire. And A New Hope. I just. I don't know. No, don't do this. Don't be like, oh, it's the first, so it gets more points. It, I mean, I mean, it does. An argument could be made for the throne room this. scenes taking this up to number two. The throne room scenes are so good. Um, and also all the dialogue between, uh, like, just Luke throughout this movie is amazing. Like, this is where we're like, he's a little kid in the first two movies. And this is the first one where it's like, hey, we got the adult Luke that's got, like, a cool hand. Like, cool, cool hand, hand Luke. Luke. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> Robot hand Luke. Just a second. Gotcha, dude. <laughs> but just one part. Yeah. Wow. It's a measure uh, of time. Um, I it sure was. I would put this at number two above A New Hope, uh, and again, I fucking love all these movies. But okay. I think like I think even the parts that I didn't quite enjoy from Jedi, I feel like the highs far outweigh those sort of negative spots that I look at. With a lot of the again, I don't hate the Ew- the Ewoks. I just hate how. Like it felt like a high school chase scene in a lot of like a theater uh, chasing that you would see like at a kids play. You mm-hmm. know, it, it it felt way too goofy and like the crazy hijinks and we're dropping rocks and we're doing it. Like, it just felt really really silly at yeah. some moments. Yeah, um, but I do think that all the the awesome moments in the throne room and and not even just those action moments, but the lines of dialogue between Vader and Luke the. Again, you know, uh, I'm a father. Just I'm I'm a Jedi, just like my father before me. I just that that moment hits me so hard. So this That's goes cool. to number two for me. The best moments in this, again, the best moments in the franchise. I love it. I, I feel like, to me, these get bonus points. It's not that a New Hope gets bonus points for being the first. It's no, that, I was just saying because yeah, Nick yeah does I'm that, just yeah. saying it's like this to me gets bonus points because it just has such a strong end in so many ways. But I just watching them together, so many things feel rushed. So many characters like Yoda as a whole in this movie mm-hmm. just feels unnecessary and uh, plot choices they make with, with so many of the characters, Han, so many. I'm just like, this just feels weird. Um, Leia, totally. It's like, let's just drop any real development she's had. Let's just make her a force user now. And she knew that Luke was her brother. It's like, there's just choices made that I'm like, this doesn't feel Did this movie as make her strong. a force user? They implied she was a force user. At no point does she I use they have, the force. They said the powers in her and she yeah. kind of understands a little bit Luke that she's tells connected her you have to the Luke. powers of the Jedi. Yeah, yeah, but like that doesn't make her a force user. It means she has the potential. Will what they elaborate on that? Well, either way, Whatever. she's got what I'm saying is it's yeah. just like all of a sudden average. by dialogue, she's yeah. now yeah, with like no setup, um, equal really. setup. Yeah. yeah, and that's the thing. It's like if there was a movie in between this, that kind of like yeah. drawn out, I think it would be different. I can't believe it though, because like this, my entire life was my favorite, and there's so many things that are my favorite about this. This right. is the only time I would ever choose green over blue in my life. Luke's <laughs> lightsaber is the best dope. lightsaber. It's, lightsaber. it's freaking cool as hell. The Emperor is amazing. All so the dialogue's man. amazing. The set design's great. The speeder bikes are cool as hell. The scout troopers are the best. Jabba's palace, all of that stuff's fan fucking tastic. Uh, but I put this as number three. Yeah. I and then what? to me, so to me, the New Hope oh and my, my rationale for putting that a little bit above this one. Again, the, we're splitting hairs here. But what I like about a New Hope is obviously it's an origin story it's, it's it's the introduction to all this it feels like an adventure that all these new characters are going on and i love the dynamics of them trying to get to know each other um they're not quite great written as and not as well written as they are in the later half of the series but i i just it feels more like hey we've set off on this thing and it's exciting this one just going back and watching it, you're like oh man they're just on this planet for a real long time and han doesn't really do anything they don't really give him or Leia anything really pertinent yeah. to do. Luke's up there and Lando's up there, and and it should have been Han. But on I mean, the they're, they're taking out the like. The there's base. no reason that Lando should have been in this at all. <laughs> like, why? Why was he not? Why was Han the, the the leader, this general, not the guy who's going to go pilot the mission that's going to blow up the second on Death Star on his own ship? Yeah, on his own ship. And Lando, the guy that's not, we don't really know for being a pilot, why didn't he go do the strike team down? down? You know what I mean? It's I get it. We wanted to see Han and Leia, and, and we had to have those tender moments with them, and it's good. But at the same time, we didn't really give those stories or them anything especially, like, wow to do. Well, and I feel like when you look at Marvel stories, they're so much better at like when there's two or three people. They each have a plan of action that they have to dominate. And we just didn't get that, that much in this. I Just to respond to one Rebuttal. of the things you said... It was because, like, why why is Han leading it? Because it was a crazy suicide mission where they're like, who's crazy or stupid enough to do that? And it was like, oh, he volunteered for it. Mm-hmm. Orlando wouldn't have volunteered instead of, you know, running this attack that 
the idea was that they were going to get there and like the base was going to be undefended and they were just going to attack and go. Seems like they're both pretty yeah. dangerous though. Like, sure. Yeah. yeah like, like Orlando you, came closer to death. Yeah. Than I was going to say, if you gave me the choice of like, okay, you're going to take a bunch of guys and try to raid a little hut or you have to go but to the like, belly of something called the Death Star. But like, I don't think but I'm, here's I'm the, like, it's not. It's a moon that's controlled by the Empire. You know it's what true. I mean? It was, so it's, I mean, it's, it was a more yeah. covert mission. We I saw totally one, get that. yeah, one base. But like the whole moon and even getting on there, like there was a good chance that they would get there and be like, no, no, these keys were old. That didn't actually like, wasn't going to happen from the conversation yeah. we got. I, I feel get like you. Jedi gets a lot of shit for having another Death Star, and I think a lot of that just has to do with Force Awakens. Like, I don't really see it as a problem just when you just look no. at the original trilogy. I like that they were making another Death Star, and I especially like Bigger the design one. that they had for it, yeah, where it was half constructed. It was half made. Yeah. It's like, yeah. there there was, and going back like to totally Tatooine, so many of these things didn't feel like, oh, this is so convenient that it's all coming back to mm -hmm. this. And I think that it's only now we have a different like lens yeah, that we're yeah. looking at because of what happens in the prequels and sequels. And but going back to Tatooine makes sense, right? Because that's where they found Han the first and that's time. Where and that's, Jabba where, and that's where Jabba yeah. is. Beef. That makes sense. And also one of the reasons why I think it doesn't feel um it doesn't feel cheap to see the Death Star is because it has the height and value of the Emperor is going to be there as well. Mm. And the, and it's smart because and the reason the Emperor is there is because he realizes that if he lets it out that he's going to be there, the Rebel Alliance will have no choice but to have to come and kill him, and it draws him further and further into his plan. That's all very, very clever for me. Yeah, I just think that, I don't know, I'm, again, I'm a sucker for the origin story, and I'm a sucker for that first Star Wars. How about you, Bear? I, uh, yeah, growing up, I would say this was my favorite as a kid, just because there's so much action and adventure going on, and it's such a satisfying ending, but now growing up, obviously, I, I think Empire is still the best to this day. And now looking at it, I, I agree with you, Tim, where there is a satisfying ending, but only half of it's sat satisfying. And a little with you, uh, Nick, where the adventure that Luke's going on, uh, off on like makes sense for him and all this stuff, but then the character stuff that they do with the other characters doesn't feel as satisfying because it doesn't really fit their characters. Like Lando should have done the covert thing because I feel like we set up Lando in Empire to be kind of the sly, cool guy. That should have been a mission that he could have done, and it would have been fun to see him like do that with Leia and have their character dynamics build, and maybe her hanging out with him made her realize, like, oh... I actually really like I I need to be like I want to be with Han and all this stuff. Right. And so to see them come together maybe at the end would have been more satisfying. Uh, but yeah, there there's a lot of weird choices and I, I, I think I gotta do a turn. Before this conversation, oh, I was thinking no. number two, but now now after like both of your points, like I, I think this goes number three. But again, it's all so close. Like the original trilogy is fucking amazing yeah. uh, throughout, but I, I do have to give more respect to A New Hope because of the uh, building of this new uh, universe and this new adventure, and you get more of the characters back, to, back and forth and, and whatnot in that first movie that made you love them, and you don't get a lot of satisfying moments like that throughout this movie, so... It, it, it's a weird balance uh, of things from uh, from both. There's a lot of great highs, like Andy said, but there's a lot of weird lows that like don't make the movie bad, but they uh, make it stale at some points. One more thing that I want to add is like this: the f first two movies, uh, the second movie really builds up the Emperor. The first movie is implied there's an Emperor because it's an Empire, right? And I feel like the payoff of who the Emperor is and how he acts is so good in this movie yeah, where it's it like we don't know anything about him and getting to meet him and know him and it's like oh this guy's fucked up and then fucking lightning shooting out of his eyes i feel like that arc that they they built up with that and the payoff that of who the emperor is mm -hmm. and actually even how he gets killed by darth vader like oh, it's so good I do appreciate Something the ruthlessness. Something that the other movies uh, don't match with the villains. I agree, and I, and I love I love that storyline. Mm -hmm. I think I think what this movie does tremendously well is wrapping up Luke Vader mm -hmm. and Emperor storyline. I think mm -hmm. that is the power of this. Everything and else just kind of feels a little like filler. Like we got to give those characters like, something to do. Yep. And it, the, and those are though. You know what I mean? Like the story yeah. is this this the this trilogy is Luke's. Story, yeah, but for but sure. And like Skywalker and Empire aren't that way though. That's that's the problem. It's just like it's not like we have nothing to compare it against. It's like Han, Luke, Leia, Lando but have things are, to do. That they are, they cool. are like um, uh, Han All of and your Leia's. Are empirically wrong. All right, Han and Leia's Thanks, opinions, like or opinion. the story, like in two, is only to get Luke 
to where he has to be. But that's interesting. Like they, they there's also the romance mm -hmm. between them yeah. that's budding and the dialogue yeah. between them that grows there. And I feel like Leia and Darth Vader in A New Hope is like they are like that's the thing that binds all these characters mm -hmm. together and like to the villain seeing Alderaan blow up. It's like things are happening to these characters that mean more than just you know, just dialogue. Uh, it's it's yeah. unfortunate too, because like I mean, obviously we're if, if you were if you guys were all to just switch right now and put Jedi at number two, I'd be like I don't care. It's great. It's a great movie. It's I love great. It. Um, we're splitting hairs, and this is just for the sake of having fun. But w it's unfortunate because can you imagine a reality where Leia was on that in that throne room also? That would like, have been they, so cool. That yeah. where they had no, to give her. I, I they actually gave yeah. her something where, where he was like, "Hey, I got one more pull." And when he said, "Your sister," she, they they brought her in, and then they together had to fight Vader. That would have been fucking amazing. But like, she yeah. would not have been trained, like you know. It That's why. Have but but they would have given her something to do. Other than, I mean, they literally gave but her. She was taking like one thing to do, which is kill two stormtroopers. Doesn't mean that she doesn't have that raw power, though. But she know? was like no. kind of leading. Uh, I'm just saying. I'm, I mean, obviously, you can't just have that happen. You would have had to set up the whole movie that way. But but it's disappointing that they set up that threat of Leia in the beginning, and I'm like. Oh, it would have been so cool if we saw her do something in regards to like having to. But, it's cool, and we get that because what you want when you leave this, like when I was a kid, I was like, we're never gonna get more of these. This is it, and you wanted the reality of him. You thought, okay, Luke's gonna go far, and he's gonna train Leia, and then they're gonna make the, the Jedi Academy, and all this stuff's gonna happen. It would have been cool to see that. That's all. I'm I saying. I think that the reason they set that up is to create stakes so that you know that like, oh, Luke is expendable. Like right. they can but I would have loved Luke. to have seen that. Yeah. Set, like. Yeah, but Leia's yeah. also like maybe she dies but in this like, thing down there, and dude, then the thing is, you know yeah, what I mean? Leia, Leia's not a great plan. Leia and Han are doing something super important that would have let like if they couldn't have done that, all of the rebellion would have died. Or right it, there, it, it, maybe Man, not. Fucking Wedge Antilles could have done that shit. Maybe not even the throne room thing, but even just setting up that she has force powers of like having her some, having to give her something to do that forces her to like on instinct try it. Or An ATSC landing on her, and she. Fucking yeah, uh, like that's all. <laughs> Instead, they gave Han the moment with the gun and shooting yeah, things. All right, yeah, let's yeah. vote for this. Is this. Let, let me just say this is not my Thor Incredible Hulk moment. Like <laughs> no, if, it, if this gets swapped, I don't give a shit. I, I think care, they're either. both awesome. Fucking, I movies. just it's like it's yeah, it's, it's slightly lesser for me than A New Hope by just a small hand. And we're that's only like, arguing about the, it this much because we care a lot about all of these movies right, and we're just fucking nerds. Right. Yeah. Um. All right. Who thinks it's better than A New Hope? Raise your hand. Kevin and Andy raise their hands. Uh, the okay, ranking okay. of the Star Wars <laughs> universe so far. Number one, Empire Strikes Back. Number two, Star Wars New Hope. Number three, Star Wars Return of the Jedi. Next week. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Woo! Star Wars Episode One: Woo! The Phantom Menace. Man. Let's go. Here we dude. go. I'm oh, pretty stoked. Least. Hey, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Before, before we move on from oh, this God. very moment... <sighs> I want us all, all perfect to guess. We, we like I, we Speculate. this. We just spent an hour and thirty eight minutes talking about uh -huh. a thing that we fucking love and all the stuff and finding the criticisms and all that. Mm -hmm. Let's try in our heart of hearts from here on out to find the things we acknowledge like. the good. Yeah. We can also talk about the bad, but let's try to acknowledge the good. Okay, let's look at Palpatine's story here. Let's see him over these next three movies. Shout out How to my How old changes. fucking uh, YouTube thing where I did the B list where I did. L Video about finding the things, things that are to like fine. The, yeah. the music. There's movies. some good yeah. stuff. Let's yeah. just keep our, our hearts open there's, in the prequels cool and the stuff. sequels. Okay, there's a lot of cool stuff that happens in the sequels. And, and also, I'm glad that you know we can make fun of anything, whether we love it or maybe <laughs> right. we don't love it. But like you know, that's part of the show. Is that like we we like to make jokes about the shit that we watched. So I, I think that that will continue <laughs> on <laughs> forever <laughs> for the rest of this series and ever. Uh, but until then, may the force be with you.